Welcome to Skarn. This is a land that has been built up, fought over, raised, and built up again numerous times across the ages. The peoples are hardy and tough. The land is unforgiving and harsh, and the deities gone from this world. After the Divine Ra War, the Divine Races and the Redeemed had a truce, but that has run up, and their shorter-lived races view the Divine War as a distant memory. Scarn is changing, and along with it, our heroes. I bid thee greetings, redeemed and divine races, titan spawn and ancient ones. I am Patrick, known on the winds of change and the beaks of birds as Patty Shakes underscore, and I am the game master for this story. This is session three of Draco Genesis, Titan's Lament, taking place in Scarred Lands, a setting published by Onyx Path Publishing. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales on a lot of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out Twitter, where we tweet daily, at Vorpal Tales. A Facebook and Instagram, where you get great pictures of all our cast and GMs outside of the tabletop. A website, VorpalTales.com, where you can get all the latest news about everything we are doing and um, see our where you can get all the latest news about everything. A Patreon, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. You can join the wonderful other Snicker Snacks and Slitty Troves like Weapon M, Don Arnetto, and David. Finally, a Discord where you can come hang out with us awesome humans and discuss all kinds of topics or play video games with us. I would like to thank Onyx Path Publishing for making an incredible world and setting to use to amaze and delight. Also to Astral Tabletop for being our virtual tabletop and platform for our players to roll their dice and view the Titan spawn that seek their demise. Additionally, to N8 Mid for the fantastic character sheet he created for this game. A thank you goes to Vinstept, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. And our newest shout out goes to Love Your Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure to check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. And now, dear viewers, meet our intrepid adventurers who look to explore, spelunk, socialize, and bring their influence onto the world of Skarn. Players, state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you will be playing tonight. Good evening, fellow heroes. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi, and tonight I will be playing Susa, the uh, sassy uh, artificer. It would have been a little more convincing if you, if you had forgotten sassy. But then again, I can't get my words out of my mouth. Anyway, so. Hey everybody, I'm Ever, my pronouns are they, them, and tonight I will be playing Yine, whose pronouns are, as of yet, unknown. They are Sneaky Sneak Ranger, Sneaky Sneak Rogue, and uh, they have all the furs. All the furs. Hey everybody, I'm Pinky, and tonight I'll be playing Terhana, who is a barbarian manticora, and uh, ready to smack down some humans who want to turk smack. She's a deputy now. What up? We gave Tahana a badge. Oh, jeez. Um, hello. <clears throat> hello, everybody. I am Steve. You can find me on the internet at or as Voodoo Arcade. And tonight I am playing Lamalthan, the Jindali fighter sorcerer. And... I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight I am the Paladin Gar. Thank you, adventurers. Now, before we forget ourselves and escape for a little while into a realm of sword and sorcery, here in the world today, many people are struggling with very real matters in combating their own monsters. January is a month that brings awareness to many important things, including cervical cancer awareness. Regular screenings and getting the HPV vaccine can greatly mitigate your risk. Birth defect prevention, taking folic acid, prenatal vitamins, living a healthy lifestyle, and regular doctor's appointments can help prevent many defects. And also the very important Black Lives Matter movement is still going on. This is the most important period in time we are living in, and we ask that you educate yourselves on topics you may be ignorant to, and work with your fellow humans to better the world. 
Remember, seize the time. Live now. Make now always the most precious time, for now will never come again. Before you gaze further into the story of these adventurers, allow our paladin to remind you of what they have already conquered and overcome. When we began last week, chaos reigned as the realization of the murder hit. Our group gathered round to check out the bodies and end up as some of the prime subsects in the case. Fourth Vassos, the captain of the guard, highly decorated but little earned, tells the group that they are all outsiders, except for Gar, who's let off as he's a human. While the rest of the group is brought into a tent to be questioned by Beauregard Mykos. Mikos? Uh, El Pequeño Lagarto. Uh, with the group, uh, they also pulled uh, the quadruplet dancers, Draco, the fighter announcer, and Darnell, a necromancer. Questioning them all individually so they could not corroborate their stories, the only flaw in his plan went completely over his head. Uh, he questioned the dancers, Susa, Terhana, and Yene. While finding out nothing relevant, he only learned that Susa can make a nice smelling giant's toe. Terhana <laughs> is far too imposing for him to deal with, and Yene is far too innocent to have done any of this. During these interrogations, Gar made his way to the medical tent to check on the bodies, using the last of his butt ale to sway the guard into giving him a few minutes, only to find only one body. And that Salazar was, once again, not dead, and had cut his way out the back of the tent. Gar interrupts this guard's key break to inform him of the missing body, and also to prove that he could not have done this himself, as there was not enough time. The guard agrees, and Gar runs off the tent to give its statement. Uh, after Gar arrives, uh, guards make some commotion about the missing body, and Captain Hork shows up to tell everyone that they're less likely suspects, but will still be spending the night in jail. Gar once again gets off the hook for being human, and uses this time to check on if he could find out where Salazar had come from before attacking the speaker. Failing to come up with anything more than stumbling footprints, he makes his way back to the Temple of Idra and finds the body of Salazar, still in the process of being embalmed, not having been stirred from its location. Gar realizes that the man who attacked the speaker was only Salazar in disguise. With little else to do, he sleeps off what alcohol is in his system. The rest of the wayward group is being led to jail as Lamalthoon briefly discusses with his elven compatriot how best to dispatch the guards, only to give up upon seeing the lack of initiative from Nine. Once in the cells, Terahana picks the lock in their cell and contemplates escape, but is talked out of it by Lamalthoon. And in the morning, Captain Horus comes to inform them all that they are now the new deputy investigators, as a higher power has deemed the truth must be known. Uh, while being released, the uh, guard notes that Terhana's cell was open and she could have escaped the entire o time. Awkward. Gar meets up with them at processing, and they begin their investigation of the crime scene and body simultaneously. The crime scene shows very little blood, drunken trail, as Gar had mentioned, and one of the quadruplets had a slight offset from the rest, maybe having seen something. The body proves to have very little wounds that would have resulted in death, except for one in the upper chest, when looked at more carefully, showed that Salazar had removed the speaker's heart before running off. Ine checks and also informs them that the killer did not leave the city, but in fact doubled back in order to fool the lesser tracker. The Malthoon, using his knowledge, believes that uh, the reason for the heart to be removed would be some Titan-related ritual, as it holds the most divine essence leading Susa to state that heart is like a battery, confusing us all. Thank you very much, Gar. So yes, you had just uh, examined the immediate and most obvious trails, which being uh, the other body of Salazar and the crime scene itself. Uh, however, you still have many leads to follow up on, many avenues of investigation to pursue. So, 
we'll say that uh, that all of that took a day, and uh, you wake up the next energized and ready to go and continue your investigation. Well, Susa would like to go and find the four sisters and question maybe look at look at their feet see if someone's got a clubbed foot or some weirdness hmm. ask them what happened with their misstep okay what is the is the a group in agreement are you is everyone going to go together on this yeah i think following I think we the, should all travel together i think the misstep is a really big clue for us so yeah let's now that we've sp split up and gotten back together we should stay together yeah. okay i'm not yeah. used to going in a group but i guess i will for safety child you didn't hunt in the pack not really no and what clan did you say you were from from the in the horn song? Fox. And then Holly. Hmm. Interesting. Susa will come over and take Yane's hand and say, going together is much better. Yane looks like all of a sudden they just stiffen. Not because it's Susa, but because suddenly there is unwarned touching <laughs> and then finally when when they realize it's not an enemy that it's that it's a an ally they'll kind of just like relax <laughs> all right so you the group leave the knob goblin together it being your pseudo headquarters slash sort of house arrest uh as you're both kind of an investigator for this, but also kind of suspects. So uh, the best compromise that could be made was you can stay not in prison, but uh, at the Knob Goblin, where it seems that Horst has kind of a, a deal going with the owner. All right, uh, round up the usual suspects. Yeah, do we have <laughs> like, ma right ma do we, do we have like magical portent ankle bracelets? Uh, not so much that as like, oh uh, the owner is pretty buddy buddy with Horst, uh, a halfling by the name of Jillian. And uh, if you guys like suddenly didn't show up one morning for breakfast or like didn't come in at nine or something, she would totally be like, hey, those deputies slash criminals are not here. Oh, wow. The tavern owner is a snitch? Not so much a snitch as like partner. In crime. Well, no, it's the captain of the guards. Of, a member of the goon squad. Gotcha. So yes, uh, you you make your way uh, through town, realizing that you're not quite sure where the dancers would be staying. Uh, mm -hmm. However, um, you do kind of ask around a little bit, and for, it takes a little while, about an hour or so, because most people are just like, "Huh? Like what? I, I don't know, man. Why the hell would I care?" But finally, you get someone like. Oh, speakers when they come, they usually they, they stay out outside the gates. They're weird. Like they don't they don't make they don't use uh, inns or anything like that because they don't want to be confused with common tavern bards. They uh, they usually camp outside uh, city gates. So uh, you make yeah you actually have to go outside the city. So based on based on that, I'm to understand that the dancers were part of the speakers like rabble. That's what you're. That's what you're getting. Is that it seems that the dancers traveled with the speaker. Uh, so you make your way outside the city, and you see kind of a, a small little uh, semicircle of tents. I have a question. In that time where we're asking those people those questions, and they they kind of know stuff, they kind of don't know some things. Mm -hmm. In the does like in the hierarchy of. Um, speakers and dancers do the <clears throat> do the dancers gain anything when their speaker dies are they left a particular fortune or perhaps his materials or knowledges 
you, you, the person who actually knew that they would be standing outside the city is the same person who would be able to answer this for you. Mm -hmm. And they're just like, well, it's not every speaker that has dancers. Mm. So it's not, it's not that it's a partnership that always exists between each dancer. So any additional entertainment would be at that speaker's uh, behest of what they want or what the exchange would be or the agreement. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they split the fee or they provide protection sometimes. It's, it's unsure, uh, but you'd have to ask them. Understood. Unique, unique relationships each time. Understood. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. And you're a cabbage salesman, is that right? He kind of just looks at the very obvious turnips he's selling. Nope. <laughs> and and what and so what is it that you call this? Turnip. Turnip. A, a turnip. Close enough. Yes. And they're edible? Or are these more yes. of like a decorative plant. You see like he's got a little tray with samples. Mm. A sampling, I see. Oh. Yeah, you, you can definitely eat those. Do you mind if I... In his mouth. Do you mind if I partake in of your sampling? That... He points to the sign, says try one. <laughs> and this is, uh... This is prepared in what fashion? The raw kind? Trahana just like rolls her eyes and and just like puts a gold coin down and just takes a turnip and just starts eating it raw like an apple. He like holds out the three other turnips you'd get for a gold piece. <laughs> Do you want these two? Sure. She just takes them. She's like holding like in one hand, she's just eating it. The other hand holds the other turnips, like, by the green part, and she just starts chomping on it like an apple. Just eats it like nothing. And staring at a mellow food at the t same time while she's doing it, like, I, jerk. I just have, like, She's still one, mad, because just, she could have escaped. You did the right thing. Um, so, yeah, I eat eating. a cube of raw turnip, and I'm just like... Uh, it's just about as good as you think it would. And, uh, sir, might I suggest you rethink your next crop? Hey, let me out, though. They're good in stew. Oh, in stew. stew. Oh, then... Understood. So it's more of an accoutrement as opposed to a main... Well, I mean, you can do that too, but I mean, they they really taste better that way. Hmm. I see. Well, we have we have three. Perhaps Tahana will make us this turnip stew you speak of. Rory, Thank you. Don't talk to strangers. Nothing ever good to talking to strangers. No, I'm a nice person. I should talk to <laughs> But Rory, strangers are weird, and they don't get our customs or culture. I know, but maybe I can help them understand. <sighs> Looks like Mom was right again. <laughs> Good day. It's okay. It, Good day, it's okay, man. <laughs> I've been dealing with this for a while now. I think we just met the big bad of this game. You just shattered his illusions about helping people. You've oh, turned him. No. You've turned him from chaotic good to evil. Good job. <laughs> hey, we didn't harm him, or or accost him, or flip his cart. No, nope, you, just... you just insulted his yeah. life's harvest. Flipped <laughs> his mind setting. Fair enough. Good day. Good day. Mm hmm. Uh, so <laughs> you're able to uh, get out. Uh, get out. He like hefts a turnip, <laughs> considering like throwing it at the back of your head. He's just like, <sighs> Rory, don't go throwing stones. Okay. Puts it back down. Uh, you're able to make. I'll pay you a gold coin to do it. Throw it. Do it. <laughs> Money up front. She, she, she gives him two gold coins. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh no, Rory. Rory. 
give him advantage because you're not expecting and he rolled a one and a two. Oh no. <clears throat> He's oh, like, no. all right. And he hucks the turn up and it just like sails clear left of Lamalthoon and it hits like a nearby wall. He just looks at you and he's like, I was kind of hoping it was going to hit a passerby. <laughs> now, once again, you guys are getting an early start, so there's not a lot of people out. To remember, this is this is this is Vegas. Not a lot of people out early in the morning. I'll I'll look at the turnip that smashed against like you know a post or a pillar of whatever you know. Be like, sir, I believe one of your turnips tried to escape. It also does not like turnips very much. Have a good day. He takes his little open sign, flips it to close. <laughs> ah! I mean, he's and made... he starts bo- and he starts boxing up all of his boxes of turnips. To be fair, he's made three gold in the first That's twenty not bad. minutes he was open. It's not he's... bad for selling turnips. No, it's not. He take the day, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined this man's life, Steve. Your character ruined this man's life. PCs just casually ruining NPCs' lives everywhere they go. Uh, so yes, you are able to make it outside the city and head towards. Uh, and you, it doesn't take long because it's not like they're going to camp very far from outside the city because they're not fools. Uh, the speakers are not fools. They know that you know bandits and wild titan spawn do roam the countryside, especially where you, especially where you are. You're not. You're just outside the blood steps and just outside the horn saw, like two of the like most deadly areas of Scarn. So they're going to be very snug to the city. Um, and you approach, which what is a like little semicircle of tents around a uh, kind of a, a larger cooking fire, and uh, you see uh, two women that look exactly alike. They're kind of you know up there. You know they've got. Uh, some of their dance costumes on lines, being obviously having freshly been washed, um, and they uh, see you all approaching. Are are you a member of the sisters sister dancers? They both look at you and they're like, in unison, we are the Draco's sisters. That's not freaky. Are they human? Yes, they're human. Where are your the other two? Uh, they sleep, still in unison. But as you say this, uh, uh, the other two come out of the same tent. Now all four of them kind of stand, and it's almost like they do it subconsciously. They all stand in a perfect line, you know, back, back straight, shoulders square. And they all look at you. Once again, in unison, how can we help you? So this is a question about earlier, the misstep. In order of which one was it that had the misstep? Like, was it the furthest on the left? Or- uh, it's un- it's uncertain because they did rotate and move around the entire time. So. Like, okay. it could have been any one of them at any, like, so, when they were at that point. Okay. It wasn't like line dancing where we'd have been able to tell or anything. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't in a constant formation. They were constantly shifting arrangement. Okay. I just want to take a visual note. Like, do they literally move in unison once they line up? Like, shit. Like, you know, when people shift their weight or, like, shuffle their feet? Like, are they doing all of those little tiny, like, subconscious movements in unison? Sure, give me a perception check. Okay. Great question. Got to find the one that's got a nervous tick. That's a 13. 13? Oof. Level 2. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, th- they are quadruplets, though. Um, they they very much are in sync. Um, okay. And they notice you staring, and they kind of all cock their head together, stare back at you. You do notice that, you know, one does like has their head cocked slightly a little bit more one has their eyes squinted just a little bit more like like a different one a different one is like uh kind of one one's kind of got there is un un subconsciously like clenched their hand like there is the tiniest of differences but like it's 
it's almost so subtle. You like, and it almost, they almost seem to correct it too. Like they'll notice, and they notice your eyes kind of go into these differences. And as soon as your eyes meet the difference, they correct it. Can I make the assumption then? It would it be fair to think that this is just a really extremely well rehearsed gimmick? Uh, with that thirteen, no. Uh, you are you're still of the opinion that these are four separate entities, four, four separate beings. So they kind of right. just look at the. You know, this, yeah, that that was my like. I don't think they're like magically entwined to where like they, like they just, they do this as like. A like show. when twins try and wear their each other's clothes to try and confuse they're, people. They're just really good at it, but they're like purposely oh. trying to make this like a, a thing, right? Oh like, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I thought I meant like if you thought like this was like a. Like one of them was an illusionist, and the other three are illusions, or something like oh, that. Oh no, 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 no! I'm sorry. No, no, okay. no. I, I, I wanted to make sure that the mouth in could kind of like would think. Okay, these are four very separate people. They just know that by acting this way, they can get more jobs and be weird and like get yes. more attention. Okay. Yeah, especially the fact that they're traveling with a speaker, which yeah. you know the, the 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 group, the the speaker society as a whole looks you know wants to be interesting wants to be different they are exclusive gotcha. um they would need to be you know excellent in order to be traveling with one gotcha okay i'll keep that to myself for now that i've noticed that and once again all together just like how can we help you we have been tasked by the the city guards to continue the investigation into the death of your seeker now, we know that you have already been questioned by Beauregard. However, we do have some follow-up questions for you based on our investigation of the crime scene. Uh, it's safe to assume, unless I say so, they're all speaking in unison uh, for this encounter. Um, just want to put that out there so I don't have to keep saying it. <laughs> um, but when you say that, they're just like, oh, that Beauregard, he's so cute. He's really precious. And yeah, it was really sad that Speaker Xander died. Truly horrible. We didn't sleep well last night. Well, based on what we could tell from the scene, you were conducting a dance routine while the murder occurred. Is that, that that's correct? Yeah, that was this, that was Xander's favorite story to tell. He got really into it and. He liked our way of interpretation, you know, quadruplets, the four winds. It really played well. Well, from what we could tell, it, it, it seemed like one of you seemed to be out of step with the other. They all together, like, balk at the question. They're just like, huh, no, we're perfect. We're always in sync. Well, it seems that your winds were blowing a different direction that day. Hmm. Clever. Did any of you notice anything strange? Maybe a, a dizziness while you were dancing? No, we all felt fine, didn't we? And they say like it's it's they say things like that to throw you off. They say like they go, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And they all once go, yeah, we felt fine. Hmm. Mm. So Plus, then, you, you can you can ask people. We would never hurt Speaker Xander. He's our he was our friend. He gave us our shot. He really took a chance on us. We weren't really like a well known act until he came around and saw the potential we had. Oh, please, you you get me wrong. I was not implying that it was you. Oh, okay, but we, good. But we must investigate we, every avenue. You must understand. Of course. We believe that uh, if you did see something that uh, you would want to inform someone to let them know what happened to Speaker Xander, as you <gasps> did say. Of course. We were fully cooperative with little Beauregard. He's a cutie. What did this cutie ask you? What questions did he inquire? Well, first he asked how, no how long we had known Speaker Xander, and we told him about a year. And then he asked us 
if we had done this dance before, we said yes, of course. This is our this is what we're well this is what speaker Xander was known for and what we're known for. And then he kind of hmm, got off subject. Off subject. The speaker got off subject. Well, I'm I'm not Beauregard. Oh, I'm not familiar with this term. Well, let's just say his questions turned from less interested about the murder and more interested about us personally. Ew. You mean like, like what position you sleep in or like what kind of hand cream you use? And they kind of do that. <laughs> no, silly. Um, uh, no, the kind of questions you ask, like if we had any tattoos or things like that. Do you? And they all smile. <laughs> Maybe. Um, seeing that, um, it's at that Susa moment is not getting what they're saying. Can I just step up behind her and just kind of really like lean in? They're referring to the fact that he asked them about the act of procreation. Before you get to do that, oh, at, okay. like as you're stepping up to Susa, <laughs> the tent, the two that came out weren't the the two that the that came out that weren't out there yet. Yeah, that tent opens up oh, and uh, a, a man steps out. And immediate, this is the first time they kind of all react a little differently. Oh. Um, one of them has clear anger on their face. Uh, one looks upset. And the two that came out of the tent earlier uh, look sh kind of surprised slash kind of embarrassed. Mm. And this guy just kind of comes out and he sees the, the, the dancers and he looks at your group and he's just like, whoa, this is turning into more of a party than I signed up for. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave now. And immediately as he's saying that, the one that looked angry is like, Oh, this is um this is just Brian. He was here to uh to help us uh check out our tent. We had a small leak in it, and so he you know, repairs are done, right, Brian? And he goes, Uh <laughs> Yeah, repairs done. Uh, she's the only one talking, right? Yes. Got it. You seem angry. Would you like me to assassinate him when he's not paying attention? And then they kind of get their composure back together once again talking as a whole. Oh, whoa, no, no, we wouldn't condone violence like that. Very well. Meanwhile, that guy is like, like, as you see, you see as he's walking away, like, button, like, he realizes that some of his buttons are on the wrong buttonhole, so he, like, fixes the buttons. Oh. And he, and he, and he walks back in towards the city. Susa will actually turn around to Lamalthoon. Oh, yes. And uh, kind of like leans in a little bit too close to, to whisper something, but it's like really, really, like to where she's speaking, you can feel her tongue like hit your face. Uh... She says, <laughs> Okay, go ahead. She says, uh, It seems that they seem to get out of sync when they're angry. Perhaps we should invoke anger. Hmm. Yes, perhaps. I can do that. Sir! Excuse me! He's shouting, but he's like about 100 yards away at this point. Um, and he just, like, he, he can obviously hear you, but he just keeps walking. And as you're shouting, the they're, the, they're like, well, is there anything else we can help you with? Just one moment, ladies, please. Um, child, would you go fetch him for us, please? Which, which child are you speaking of? <laughs> I'm assuming Yune, the Yine. one who's always called. <laughs> okay. Yune okay. so just, uh, just gives him a, a dirty look. I would ask Terhana, but I do want him back alive. I could do it alive. Oh. Well then. She takes an extra term turnip and chucks it with the full intention of it hitting the back of his head and him like falling over not killing him but sure, just sure, sure. kind of like give me a uh, ranged attack so uh, 
And this is with an improvised weapon, so you're not proficient in improvised weapons. Uh, so give me, it'd be an attack roll, so a d20 plus your dexterity. Okay. D20 plus dex, that's three. Oop. Please crit and say that it accidentally kills him. <laughs> 13? 13. Let's see. Uh, hit the, this guy's a guard, to, but he does not to, have to, his armor on. I was going to say, so, to hit the, the pantless fuckboy? Like, <laughs> you are able to hit him in the back of the head. Um, roll, roll, a, roll a d4. He wasn't expecting it. Does that count, does it count as a sneak attack? <laughs> not four! Oh, Boom. Damn. Okay, so... Advantage. So, bam! It hits him in the back of the head, and he, like, he stutters a couple steps. He doesn't fall away over, but he just, like, stutters a couple steps, and he's just, like... What the? Ow! And then he keeps walking. She growls and then chases after him. All right, so you're able to close. You're able to close this. But when you get about like sixty feet away from him, he like hears your footsteps and he turns around. <laughs> and is like, "What the?" And he starts running too. And by the time you're able he to catch up with him, yeah, yeah. So you run, but you're a manticore. So you're a bit, you're a bit faster than him. But oh, I'm gonna say I run in all fours. Right. So you are a bit faster than him. Um, but he is, you know, dashing, sprinting back because, you know, this crazed Manticora is chasing him. Um, so, and you weren't too far away from the gates to begin with. So he's able to get like right inside the gates and you're, so you catch up to him kind of like, you know, put your arms around him, right as you're like going into the gates and the guards there are just like, um, <clears throat> yes, what's going on here? Official deputy business. We don't... And they just look at each other like, we don't have any deputies, right? No, we don't. We, we don't. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We don't She's have any deputies. She's still holding him with the one arm and then shows off the little badge thing that she got, like, prior. And, like. Did, did horse give you guys badges? Yes, the horse gave me this. I thought he did. We'll say he did. We'll say he did. I thought he gave us which, something. Which badges would equate to the, in this city to, like, a little piece of tin that has like <laughs> it's hammered down it, like yeah it's like hammered into it is like a check like for good <laughs> and there's like we've never seen no that 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 is that's obviously fake uh give me a persuasion check uh, i'm not gonna do well with this Fingers can they use crossed intimidation? That Trahana can. Yeah, you can use intimidation. Yeah, I was like, like, can I just like intimidate the crap out of him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you can use you definitely use intimidation. Okay, cool. Medical in business. Go back to your drinks. <laughs> Damn, Matt, Matt, twenty. Holy oh, shit! You literally, you literally all you, you literally, literally do. do that. Oh my all God. you literally do is just oh, your key. So you keep holding the like you've got this guy in the bear hug. You've got the badge kind of out, you know, past wow. his back. And they're just like, no, 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 that's no, obviously fake. Come with us. And you literally just do. And they go, okay, nope, that's definitely legit. I don't have time for that today. Uh, so, and the guy, the guy's like, you're, you're not going to help me? And they're just like, mm, well, sorry, sir. Technically, like, you're not past the gates yet. So you're not really in the city yet. So you're not quite our problem right now. So sorry, you're, our, you're not in our jurisdiction. And they just, they literally just turn their backs to you because they're just like, we're not going. We're not even going to look. So they just turn their backs. Uh, so she just able... like picks him up, throws him on her shoulder like a sack of potatoes, and just keeps walking back towards the group. And every time he moves, he just like slightly digs her his, her her nails like in his side, just 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 enough for him to feel it, but doesn't actually hurt him, but just enough to say, "Move, I dare you." Yeah, it's one of those. It's like that scene from Shrek. Uh, where Shrek's carrying Princess Fiona and she resists at first and is banging on his back and then eventually she just like starts pouting. Same thing with him. Uh, for about halfway back to the camp, uh, you know, he's like, get off me, you crazy man. What are you doing? This lady's crazy. She's going to kill me. And once he sees that no one's going to help him, he just kind of resigns himself to his fate and he's just like, 
All right. Well, if you're going to eat me, just like can you do it like just quickly and humanely at least. He just at this point he's trying to have like a conversation of you know when you murder me, do it so it doesn't hurt. Um, and you're able to get back to the camp. Uh, I don't the, eat trash. <laughs> what, are you, what, are, what are the rest of you doing while this chase and return happens? This cap, this catch and release happens. In the time, yeah, while that's going on, I'll just kind of stand there, kind of just staring at my nails, just be like, hmm. I wonder if she actually can bring him back unmaimed or even alive. I'll look at I'll look at them. Hmm. Play some oh, dice. I mean, be ashamed to lose she... someone in this such an odd fashion. You're looking she... at the group. Or you're looking it... at the dancers. The dancers. They're just she like do a number on Pieter without trying. So they're just like we, but we barely know that guy. It seems like at least two of you knew him fairly well. Once again, yeah. the one that was angry before kind of gives us, like, she moves ever so slightly forward, side eyes down the line, and scowls. Mm. And is it that the other two didn't get to know him, or were they only to know him? Whatever are you talking about, silly. I'll, the one that stepped forward just slightly, I'll just kind of step forward. No. What is it? I can tell. Is it jealousy? Or is it envy? And I'll just kind of look at them and see if I can read them. Uh, okay, can we not, you can have another perception check at this point. Oh, a perception? Okay. Ease. Um, oof, no. That's a nine. Yeah, not able to get any new information about them. Okay. And they don't... And you're obviously very much trying to rile them up or turn them against them, you know, try mm -hmm. to get one jealous or... But it, you, they seem unfazed. Okay. So, uh, at this time... Does someone uh, here have the talkie-talkie that could do something? Yeah, does anyone else want to do anything while uh, Terhana is uh, bringing back your, your friend, Brian, the pepper about, care man? I was thinking about trying to split them up by asking to check the tent. Their tent. Do, do, you, want, do you want to do that? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, do you guys mind if we take a look in your tent just in case? Because even though you're not exactly suspects, you still might have something that, you know, pertains to the investigation and, you know, we, we need to check all avenues, so we need to take a look at your tent. Well, why don't you, why don't you look at Speaker Xander's tent? There's nothing in our tent, and that's kind of personal. I would, I would like to sneak in the tent when no one's paying attention. Uh, your best opportunity is, for that is going to be when Terhana brings back, uh, uh, Brian, that'll, that'll be the most com that'll be the most com commotion. His name is Brian. <laughs> well, if you ladies don't have anything to hide, then there's no reason for us not to look in your tent. That's a great argument, but it can also be said that that's an unnecessary invasion of privacy. Well, this is a murder investigation, and. So the fact that someone died suspects. trumps all of our personal laws and rights? Well, you can take that up with Captain Horst. I'm just here to investigate. And I start oh, walking so to you, the tent. You, and just like, oh, so you think Captain Horst will be on your side about this? Well, me personally? Because we're, we're, we're good friends with Captain Horst. We met him when we came into the city. He seemed really nice. I met him when I came into the city, too. Can someone insight that, that statement? About... Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. May I as well? Sure. Sorry. 21. Okay. Uh, you, it's, they sound very truthful. Um, it sounds like it'd be common uh, practice. Um, not that you're, you know, know about this, but from a, you know, infiltrator kind of perspective, 
it would make sense if a group that is you know of its own kind of and travels a lot would be buddy buddy with the government and you know policing of each city they go to so that way if anything were to go down mm -hmm. they could be a eliminated as suspects and be protected if you know the city for some reason got mad at them so it would make sense for especially you know a non-violent group like speakers uh to get to you know to talk to and be friendly with uh the guards of any of any city they go to not necessarily just this one well when i finished my statement i started walking towards their tent with or without their permission because my primary goal is to split them up right now uh and as as a group they kind of move to stand in front of their tent they're just like um we're gonna ask that you not go in there that's you know can I you don't just up, go. You, you don't just go into a woman's bedroom like that. Can I pick up what he's trying to do and maybe try to step in front of one of them to help? Like, so if they're moving in a line of all four, I'll just step in and be like, "Oh, wait, excuse me," and just that way again, we're just trying to break up their their movement. I think right now. Is that okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll say that you're able to. The the three others do stand in front of the tent and block guard, but you're able to block off one of the four of them. Okay. We got one away. We got one uh, blocked off. You are kind of working in a small space, though, so it's not like they're very far away from each other. You know? Right, right, right. Like, only like yeah. 10 or so feet away. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're worried about a man going through their, your stuff, Susa, perhaps you could take a look and leave their feminine items alone. Not so much just being a man, but our privacy. Again. Yes, we ask that you respect that. I respect light, and currently you guys are imposing figuring out what could be going on in this city. And it well, might just be more than Speaker Xander that dies from this. Well, you think you can just walk all over us because you're a big strong man, and you could just have the right to enter our tent when really you don't. And, like we said, we'd hate to get the guards involved. You now, you've already, you've, you've, we, now, you've already... We know. Well, I know most of the guards. I at least that, that's great. This city. That's great. Now, you've already said that we're not suspects, and we've already given you satisfactory answers to all your questions, and we even allowed... We even said you have the permission to go in the speaker's tent but we ask that you not go in our tent. We can assure you that we will cooperate, cooperate in any other way possible, but that is our personal private space. Your personal private space where a man just came out of, a man who feasibly could also be a suspect, a man who could have been the man who killed Speaker Xander. Then by all means, please speak to him. Is that around the well, time Trahan comes is, back? <laughs> yes, yeah, and they kind of just like they just kind of just like motion to it and like, please, by all means, you seem to have brought him back. Ask away. Oh, good. He isn't dead yet. Oh, you're muted. Should, yeah, Trahana grabs and drops him, but like when she drops him, she still grabs the back dirt, like kind of like as like a as a cat would grab like the scuff of the kitten. She just kind of like there and just puts him like keeps him in place. Okay, so you almost got like this comically like his feet are turning, but he can't move anywhere. Like, yeah, he's like just he can barely find purchase on the ground, but like he's he's in he's put in place. He can't move. Okay, and he's just like okay, all right. So is this like a group cannibalism thing? You're all gonna eat me, or you guys just watch while she eats me? Please, just just leave me alone, okay? I, I didn't do anything. I told you, I don't eat junk food. So they're gonna eat me. Was, was this so the, the the one that I stepped in front of? Mm -hmm. Was this one of the ones that was in the tent with him, or was not in the tent with him? Just out of curiosity. Not in the tent. It's the it's the one okay. you're able to step in front of the one that, was, like, kind of looked down the line, and the one okay. who the one the one who answered originally. And so, you've kind of now with these interactions, you've kind of picked up. She, there almost seems to be like a hierarchy amongst them, and she seems to be the like the the leader. The leader. Or okay. the, the highest up. That's the, the alpha. Good. So I, 
I, I watch him do the whole like, oh my god, are you guys gonna eat me? Is this a group cannibal? Like he's like, right? Yeah, and I'll just kind of like you know I kind of like stopped her and I just look at her and I'm just like, what is it that your sisters could have possibly seen in him? I don't know what you're talking about. I think you do. Obviously. Obviously, only at least one of you seems to be making good decisions in general. Or at least, no, let me rephrase that. It seems as though only half of you are making good decisions in general. Keep making good decisions. Think about what this is right now, okay? Just kind of... Whatever you say, silly. This is... I just want to I, I make one more attempt just to, like, talk to her, like, we're not, we got off on the wrong foot. I'll admit that. This is turning into a very hostile situation. It wasn't meant to be. Help us. Help your sisters. Because this is going to break down very quickly if you don't. Do what's right. Be a leader. You're not threatening us, are you? Hmm. I don't believe I was. Well, good. She kind of takes that moment to like slip underneath you and rejoin her and the sisters. Hmm. And it's kind of this like it's very it's a very graceful movement, very dancer esque. Oh, sure, kind of sure. Just ducks underneath you. I... And, and then then the four of them together now start kind of work to like walk away from their tent. Um kind of like backing you do you back up guards they kind of like approach you like it's obviously with the intent of like you know all right let's leave let's leave our tent come on let's go back to the middle of talking all right then show me where xander's tent is gladly and the the four of them you know basically cross the semicircle uh and they just kind of extend their arms out to uh, Z- to the to the tent, and there's like the Swiss speaker Anders. Uh, Yune, give me a stealth roll to try to get into their tent now that they're not paying attention. I, I rolled um, a nine, but I would Ooh. like to use my vote from last time to then make the yep, go roll with advantage. Then, okay. for the love of God, what? <laughs> Why is this not any better? Well, it's not a natural one, it's just a two now. Um, so you go to kind of like you see them like obviously walking away and you're like perfect good job Gar way to go and you're kind of like doing the thing where like you're mainly watching them out of the corner of your eye and like, you're sidestepping and then you sidestep right into one of the, the poles holding the tent up <laughs> you're like ah shit and then the pole falls over and the entire tent like, kind of collapses in on itself and they all turn there's like <sighs> Well, we were leaving anyway, so I guess you helped us pack up. Seems like Brian didn't do his job. I'm sorry. I I uh I uh I'm I am And then they immediately go back into like the bubbly nice like don't worry about it. It's okay. So you uh, puts their hood further over their face. Gar is heading towards the speaker's tent. Their tent just fell apart because Yunai bumped into the, the thing. I'm just gonna kind of float back and forth and I wanna walk past Yunai as they're putting their hood down and just be like fleet of foot like a fox indeed. You can just feel the heat of the blood rushing to their face and the heat of embarrassment even like come out from underneath the hood and wash over you. And you're like, even you, Lamouth, are kind of like, I'll leave it at that. They're they're clearly embarrassed enough for all of us. I'm out of uh, my element. They say very, 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 very quietly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gar, you've been offered to enter the tent. Would you like to go in? Yes. Is anyone else going to go in with Gar to the speaker's tent? Usa's going to wait outside with the sisters, and she's going to ask them to do something after you handle Gar. I 
I would help Gar because I actually can do investigations, and that's what we're actually doing. It would probably help. So. All right. So the two of you into the tent. One of you give me an investigation check with advantage. I'm going to interview Brian. My investigation Brian. is a one, okay. so I would presume that would be the Malthoon's area. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take lead on that then. Okay. Uh, Toronto, what are you asking, uh, Brian? I want to know what he was doing inside that tent. You just straight up ask him that? I'm going to intimidate him and ask. Okay. Uh, you can give me an intimidation check. 13. Uh, Twice. You look around... Yeah, I saw that. It's unfortunate. Uh, you look around the tent, and it's uh, pretty squared away. Uh, definitely the tent of someone who frequently travels and is moving a lot. Uh, so there's a small cot uh, with a pillow and a sheet. Uh, there's a small table with a uh, used candle uh, that's been burnt about halfway down um, with you know a small journal, and you look through the journal, and it's uh, very clearly... Um, you know, they're working on poems or songs, things like that. Um, it looks like the last story uh, they were writing about uh, goes into the details about uh, uh, setting the uh, sun back in its proper position. And done by the gods, you know, after the Divine War ended. Hmm. And uh, you read through the first couple of, like, paragraphs of the story and you're like, ooh, this isn't good. Um, this is definitely a rough first draft. Um, and then you see like a, a small uh, a small chest that is uh, locked. Um, small enough to like just pick up? Uh, not like if you were it's one of those like you would need two hands to hold it kind of, you know, ch uh, chest whip chests. Um, oh, so like if you were to, like foot like size? Were, yes, yes. Okay. I'll let you think about that. Uh, Tirana, 18, not bad. So he, he just like, uh, you know, I was fixing that tent. Once again, you just give the single, and he's like, um, so I was just minding my business, and, uh, these four identical women appeared to me on the street last night and they were like hey we need help with our tent and I come with them to their tent and it wasn't their tent that needed help if you get my drift oh listen that's uh, eat me if you will but that's all I'm gonna say I'm I, I, we're not going to say anything else. That's, you know, you, clearly you get the gist of what happened. Hmm. Interesting. You going to let him go, or do you have anything else you're going to ask him? Uh, I kind of want to, like, keep holding on to him. That's fine. Just you in can, case, you, you like, can keep... others have a question. You can absolutely keep holding on to him. He's he's like resigned himself to that fate, you know. Using your kitten example, he's just kind of like slumped his shoulders, and he's accepting it. Aww, humans are such fun playthings. Uh, Lamal Finn and Gar. Yes. Did you do anything with that chest or any of his other belongings? I, can I check it to see if it's trapped at all? Sure. Give me a uh, give me a perception check. Susa, what were you going to ask uh, the, the sisters? I wanted to actually ask them to show me the dance that they performed for the the poem that was read. Like, I, I want a recreation of that dance. Just like, uh, well, the entire dance itself is you know, 20 minutes long. Is there a particular portion of it you want to watch? Does anyone there's, remember? There's the battle. Then it's kind of like you know, it's kind of broken down to each wind. So there's the battle of the north wind, the taming of the south, the tricking of the east, and the bartering of the west. I mean, we have to assume that the mist. If we're if this is out the of one that was at, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. there. 
it would be whatever they were doing at the time of the murder, right? Because if we assume the misstep is part of the murder, that way they would need to line up, so. Yeah, but do we know what part of the song they were at during the murder? Well, we we could just ask them to play or sing or go through that part, the portion just a couple minutes before the murder. Fair enough. Yes, I will ask you to perform the section of the song that occurred just before the speaker's death. Uh, you would know you, if if you don't if you want to be a little bit more sneaky about what you're asking for, uh, you would know that the murder occurred right at the end of the story uh, when they are going into detail about how and Keeley uh, got the last wind, which was east. Okay. So, yes, uh, recreate the portion about the east wind. Okay. And they kind of, um, you know, they move in the middle of the tent. So there's a little bit, there's enough room, even with the cooking fire, to kind of perform. Uh, this is clearly where they practice as well. Uh, and they start uh, doing the dance. All right. As they're going into their dance, every so often I will look at the. Uh, the one who angered easily and meaningfully lock eyes and then just say something underneath my breath as if I'm critiquing her, but I won't be saying real anything really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Worst dance judge ever. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you do that in the meantime, uh, at that point, uh, while that's going on, uh, La Malfoon, uh you rolled a fourteen. Uh, the chest is not trapped, but it is locked. And it, you know, it's a simple lock. It's not like he's, you know, locking a vault here. It is just a foot locker. Okay. I just want to. Uh, I say, we'll let's finish looking in the tent. But I believe that we should bring this to either Drahana or the child to open for us. Good plan. Um, since I'm not proficient in these tools, so I would just be kicking it until it opened. <laughs> I'm proficient <laughs> in carrying things. And then, things. And then so, I die what what's called the Jack Daniels death. <laughs> that, that is a... Uh... <laughs> That is a valid form of opening this lock, as like I said, it's a very simple lock if you would like to try to just break it. I actually don't have any strength. Um, so... <laughs> no. Decent in that. I was gonna say, okay, Gar, do you... Gar, maybe instead of taking it to them, your right foot could do the job? Uh, yeah, I suppose I might be able to manage that. See if I have anything that would be able to help with that, though. Like a hammer, yeah, a hammer or a crowbar or fierce words, <laughs> cutting words. And no, I've only got my spear on hand. Okay. And uh, you can give me an athletics check though to kind of break this thing if you attempt to. All right, a twenty. 20. <clears throat> So you go to like, just like kind of kick the lock, but you slightly miss. You just like bash your heel through the top of the chest, not just like splinters. And you're just like, hmm. uh, that works. It's open. Uh, you look inside the chest. There is uh, a small ledger book. It's just you know, very you know, very small leather bound. Um, a sack of gold coins. It's only got about like 20 in there. And then uh, a dagger that wrapped around the hilt uh, is a uh, is a lizard's tail. A dagger with the lizard's tail wrapped around the hilt. Yeah, it's uh, not an actual lizard's tail. Like, uh, like worked the, the into design. the metal. Yeah. yeah, worked into the metal is a lizard's tail wrapped around the hilt. Hmm. Interesting. And how does that affect 
And how does that affect the hand geometry of the handle? Does it make it still comfortable to hold? Am I able to index the blade? Uh, it's wrapped in such a it's wrapped, no, it's wrapped in such a way that the grooves make perfect finger slots. So that if you were to wrap your fingers around the hilt, they'd fall perfectly in between each of the wraps of the tail. Mm, very ergonomic. Yes. So it's still very while you know it looks nice. It's also still a very functional weapon. Interesting. Does it does it have blood on it? No. <gasps> there was no blood. So that wouldn't even be a thing. That's right. No, there was blood, just very little. Very little. Okay. I yeah, the crime that. yeah, the, the, the spot of the crime there was very little, especially for the injury you found out later was quite grave. I would go for the journal over the dagger, I think, for right now. Okay. Uh you open up the journal. Yeah. yeah, inside of it uh are things like um uh, more goddamn poetry. No, uh, on this one, the pages, like some pages, will have like a list of six names, and then like three to one, four to five, one to eight, and then a, a one that's circled, and then 100, 100 GP. Put the page. This one has a list of uh, four. It says elf, human, dwarf, manticora. The manticora hand is circled, 300 gold pieces. Flip the page. Um, uh, owl, bat, octopus, bat circled, 500 gold pieces. And it's, and it, it's several, you know, several pages of all this. The one that had Manticora, does that line up with the pit fight that Trahana was in? No. No. What's on the last page that has writing in it? Yeah. The very last page that has writing in it uh, is just another similar list. The Nothing in here deviates from just, you know, uh, you know, keeping these records of whatever these are. Does it okay? Is it always a list of four, or it's like four to six? It varies. It's, it's four sometimes, six sometimes. Sometimes it's just two, but always of one of the list, one is circled with a number followed by GP. So it seems like it's a circle with payouts. So it's a bookie. It's a bookie. It seems like. Or things that he, he has bet on. The hell is a speaker being a bookie for? Hmm. Is this how he got killed or is it something unrelated? I don't know. I take. Uh, I want to note the last, the, the the last page, and kind of like I'll. Do you mind if I hold on to this? Yeah, you go for it. Okay. Um, maybe grab that knife too. I was gonna be taking everything out of there. Yeah. It's all. It's all per. It's all pertinent. Okay. okay. So you quit. It's just the, like I said. It's just the three things. So it's the. Small book, the dagger, and the gold piece, uh, you know, bag of gold pieces. Okay. And then uh, you walk out of the tent? Yeah. Uh, you walk out just in time to see the, the last uh, couple of um, movements of uh, the dancers. And then they finish. Okay. And they're just like, what did you think? Speaking to Sousa. Was I able to see at any time any one of them being out of sync or making a misstep? I don't know. Step? Give me a perception check. Oh. That starts with a You perception. can have an advantage because you're specifically looking for this misstep. And you and you narrowed it and you narrowed down which part Boom! of the I don't need Didn't it. Didn't even need it. Didn't even need it. Natural twenty. Got it in one. So you're watching, you're watching, you're waiting for this inevitable misstep you know is going to happen. Perfect. Oh, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's perfect. They're perfect. 
with the nat 20, is he able to tell which one should have been the misstep? No. All right. Uh, and Susa will say that was that that was quite marvelous. And then she'll uh she'll come over to her side pack. You see her moving around. She pulls out a set of bamboo wind chimes that she just made last night, and she hands it to the one that's not angry all the time. So okay. we'll she she hands it to one of the other ones. <clears throat> they take it and you know even with just the one looking at it as as, as a group wow we love it thanks and the, uh the one you handed it to immediately goes and hangs it up on well, not their tent uh <laughs> like uh on one of the one of the trees that's close by may this bring you joy and you all listen as the breeze rolls through and moves to the, the bamboo wind shines and they make a wondrous sound um it's not just you know the typical sound of bamboo hitting each other it's Almost as if a small tune or uh, a, 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 a song is being played through them. And you're just like that is. It's not how wind chimes work, but sure enough. Uh, as I walk out, I just kind of want to, you know, step out and you know, fix. You know. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for letting us search this tent. And I want to walk back over to the leader and just kind of say, again, sorry for any issues or concerns or negative um, happenings during this. But, you know, dwarf, elf, manticora, human. And I want to repeat one of the, one of the things from the page. You do that, they just she just keeps looking at you like unfazed. Hmm. Which was the one that's uh he's not talking to the one that got angry about the uh, yes. Brian, right? Yeah, that's the one he's talking to. Okay. Yeah, uh okay. she doesn't seem to visibly react at all. Okay. In fact, when like when you like you say it, and then you like you say like a list, and then she just kind of like cocks her head, like very confused. Very well. Well, if there's anything else we can help you with, if any of you remember anything, feel free to uh, send us a message. Of course. Just one more question. Sure. What will you be doing now that the speaker is gone? What's your plans? Well, I haven't really thought of that. Um, we're probably going to stay in town for a little bit longer. Just to get over the shock and to help develop a plan. Well, probably go back to the capital and hopefully find another speaker that might be willing to work with us. That wouldn't be much of a problem with you now that you're pretty well known, right? Well, well known a new veneer, not throughout the whole of hegemony. Not yet. Not yet. I'll turn to do whatever they're going to do. Anybody else want to do anything while you're with the dancers, or is it back in the town? Uh, Trahana jokes around and looks at the dancers and then looks at Brian. Can I keep them? They're like, I, I, do you need a tent repair? Sure. Tent repaired. And she does like a really weird like wink thing, but she ends up, like, blinking with both eyes because she, she doesn't understand. They all cock their head. Stuff. They're just like, yes, <laughs> tent repair. I 
think we're done. All right. Yes. So you guys start walking back into the city. Um, and as you you make your way into the front gates and you go about a city block, kind of just discuss amongst yourselves, you know, what the next step might be, what lead you might follow up on. Well, while we're um, walking, I'll fill them in on what we found just so everyone officially knows that we found that code. So, Sure. Um, and as you do that, uh, one of the dancers actually, like, you can you hear like footsteps behind you guys can all turn and you see one of them just sprinting up to you guys <sighs> sorry I had to tech get the slip from my sisters they probably wouldn't approve of me doing this I'm Elv- I'm I'm Elvira um, and I, I don't think none of us did I want to start off by saying none of us did anything wrong okay we didn't. We didn't hurt the speaker. He was, you know, we saw him as like a big brother or father. He took care of us and he gave us a break. And we would never hurt him. Never. But the youngest, Moira, she's become infatuated with one of the guards. She keeps sneaking off and she keeps rendezvousing with him, and it's just. It's not sightly. The four of us, we have our apps. It's the four of us. We're one unit. We're one team. And we told her that we don't approve of this, but this only seems to make her want to do it more. Listen, if you could just maybe tell her to stop, or, you know, if you could attempt to catch her in the act, then maybe she'd be embarrassed enough to come back to us? I don't know. Uh, which of the guards do you know his name? No, sorry. Is it not Brian? I'll level with you. We're worshippers of Idra, and one of the, Mm. you know, worshippers of Madriel go to church. Worshippers of Idra. We we are, I looked at Gar, we are aware of the requirements of worshipping Idra. We, so, are you know, sorry after, for, we are sorry for your loss. After a good performance, we thank the goddess. Understood. <clears throat> but no, it's not Brian. It's another one of them. It's another guard. We're not sure who, what his name is. We just know that, you know, when she thinks we're all asleep, she sneaks out. Do you believe that your sister could have done something unbeknownst to her that might have aided in harm to the speaker? Obviously she would not have done it with intent. Who knows what that guard's got her doing. We just... He's a bad influence. And it's it's the only thing weird that's happened other than, you know, Xander being murdered. So, it's all I've got. Thank you. It's not much to lead, but and it might not even be related, but it's something. It is a lead. We thank you. you. You've done the right thing. While she just we, kind of while looks at all of you and she's like, and I trust that, you know, if you have to talk to us all again, you won't tell them I talked to you. We never saw you. Okay. And she turns around to leave. Well, so, uh, young one, and I kind of chuckle as I look over at Yine. <laughs> it looks like you're going to have to uh, do some tailing tonight. That's fine. I can handle that. Ah, uh, yes. Children watching children. On second and, thought, uh, do it yourself. While uh, it's still daylight, I'd like to also go and visit uh, Darnell. See if he knows anything about reasons, or if he knows better, or anybody in particular in the area that would know or need a part or anything. Hmm. 
Okay, are you going to go as a group? Well, about what time is it? Uh, we'll say it's like midday-ish, like one-ish, two-ish. I'll say this. I'll say, uh, well, we probably need to wait for night. Uh, actually, if he's going to go talk to Darnell about necromancy stuff and follow up that lead, I'll suggest I'm going to ask around and see if perhaps maybe I can find a taker of wagers that might be able to assist with the coding of this book. Okay. Or maybe even take on these these debts in exchange for information. Okay. Have uh Lamalthun, have you showed anybody the dagger yet? Uh, I think Gar took the dagger, but I would not have hid it from you, so I would have yeah. said, like, we found the book in this dagger, so... Yeah. Uh, but Gar technically has it right now. Does yeah. that... Does that... Hilt happen to have anything to do with the Serpent Mother? Give me a, uh... Religion check. If you're asking Ooh. for that specifically. That's a good Relig- question. Religione? Yes. Uh, would I also As it is formerly known. Religione? Uh, if you want to specifically wonder if it's of the type, if it's of the certain mother, sure. Uh, but with the 18, probably need Eight, to. 18. Yeah, no. Uh, with the 18, uh, you can officially rule out this belonging to Mormo or being related to Mormo. Okay. Well, it's, you know, snake-like, lizard-like symbology. It is not the symbology of Mormo. Right. Interesting. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's good. <laughs> True. Uh, and one of us, as long as we're splitting up, should just maybe see if one of the guards is willing to admit to uh, having some awesome relationship with one of the quadruplets. I mean, pretty sure one of them might be bragging. I was going to say, you go to a bar, you go to a beer hall with enough guards. One of them will say, someone will talk. Yeah. <laughs> Without you asking. Right? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, dude. Not again. You said t- you, you. I don't want to hear about this again. <laughs> All right. So uh, Gar is going to follow up with Darnell. Uh, Malfun is going to follow up and try to find either another bookie or someone else who's looking to take bets. Um,. What about the rest of you? Any of you fall either any of you going with those people or doing your own thing? Um, I do kind of like the idea of the whole like finding the guard at the bar. Okay. So Trahana can leave that up. Is anyone so it leaves uh Yine and uh Susa? Would either of you like to follow any of these three or blaze your own path? Susa actually wants to blaze her own path, so to say. It, I don't think it would take very long maybe an hour or two but uh you know i'm sure that the we've heard enough of the the poem of the four winds um but i want to hit hit up a library or some type of re, uh, religious or historical repository and like actually because i I, as a as an Asathi, I don't know much about these four winds, so I want to figure out like the the actual symbology, and like if anything that we've found in our investigation specifically has to deal with these four winds. Okay, so uh, a library or some other place that might have knowledge on this. Yeah, you could just give me like a montage. Book book uh, montage. Your name? <laughs> um. I am going to Well, um so following one of the quadruplets is at nighttime or could I do that now? Uh depends. I mean if you wanna kinda of like scout them out and see if they do anything right now, you can. But uh they gave every indication they were kind of staying in and around their uh little campfire for right now at least during the day. Okay, then I will tag along with one of the other groups. Oh, who are you going with? 
Um, what were the tasks again? There were one was at the tavern. <laughs> uh, and then... Library with Susa, uh, the tavern with Trahana, the uh, necromancer with uh, Gar, or uh, finding a bookie with uh, Lanathun. What is a library? It's a repository of knowledge. I like knowledge. I guess I guess I'll go see. Is it is there some almighty being that just hands out knowledge? Oh, they put it in books or tomes and you have to read it. Sometimes I don't understand the languages, but sometimes the pictures are nice. I've I've heard of books. I haven't actually seen one, but uh, I would like to go with you. Alrighty, our adventurers have plotted out their next steps they're taking in this investigation, and uh, we'll give them some time to reach their destinations and care uh, for their characters. We'll allow the players also a small break. Uh, we'll see you back in 10 minutes at 1042 Eastern Standard Time uh, as we uh, take care of incidentals and we'll be right back. Oh, yeah.
Welcome back, listeners and viewers, to Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis, Titan's Lament. We've come back from break, ready to go, our party to go their separate ways. We shall start with Johanna, as she goes to one of the local taverns to scout out and potentially overhear which guard may be involved with one of the dancing quadruplets. Now, Terhana, is there any bar you wanted to go to in particular? Did you want to just go to the Knob Goblin? Did you want to try a different bar? I would like to, you know, over here, like what the bar, like there's always that one bar, like the cop bar, you know? Sure. Uh, I'm right. assuming Knob Goblin has more, like the town has more than one than the go Knob Goblin. So like, oh, I'm yeah. like to find the cop bar or the guard bar, and that's where okay. I want to I want to go. Give me a, an investigation check as you kind of try to listen, you know, walk around town and overhear people as they enter bars and see if maybe you can judge and suss out which one might be the right one. I got an eight. An eight. Uh, there are a lot of bars in this town, as like I said, it's like Vegas. Um, so you know, you kind of walk into a couple, get the feel of the place, and you're like, no, that this. This isn't this isn't it. And you go to a couple more. Um, and you do eventually find it. it. Just it's going to take you most of the day to find this bar. Um, you know, it's about seven or eight by the time you kind of find the right bar. Um, people it seems that the people at these bars don't really talk about other bars. And it's almost like uh, once you like you like you have your bar and like that's your tavern. Like you go to that tavern. You don't care about any other tavern because this is the this is the hole in the side of the wall that fits you and you don't care about the other places. It's very like uh, loyal kind of thing. Uh, the patrons are the patrons and you're not gonna suddenly get someone from you know the next bar down to come to this one, uh, unless you know they're out of ale or something. Okay. <clears throat> so you find uh, that the the one that most guard, you know, some of course there are gonna be guards who prefer not to hang out with their own after work. Um, but the one that the most go to, and it seems to kind of, like you said, be like the guard bar uh, would be the uh, the Black Raven. Ooh, fancy name. Yes, fancy name, but when you walk in, it's just like, it it's a shitty place. Um, you know, but, but it is, it's definitely the right place because about 75% of the people here, uh, you know, either have a cloak slung over their chair that has the symbol of the guard on it uh, or are wearing some badge of some sort of their station. Um, this definitely seems like the place and um, the good and the bad of you taking you so long to find this place is uh, seems that a lot of them are already pretty far into their drink. Okay. Uh, Trahana like goes to like walk into the bar then she stops for a second and then makes sure she pats down to make sure she's got like the badge or whatever that horse had given them and then okay. she kind of like stares at it. This is a piece of crap doesn't mean anything does it whatever and it just keeps on going because just like sure she, she can there intimidate that, her way through it it's fine <laughs> there is that moment where you know you open the door and several people look at you not just because you're not obviously a guard but like i said it's not like taverns get a bunch of new people on the daily so like not only a new patron but a non-human at that there's a lot of stairs but they quickly kind of just eye you, eh, whatever. And a lot, most people just go back to their drink. Okay. She goes in, walks up towards the, uh, the bar. Okay. She asks it's for the strongest thing that they have. Uh, it's it's uh, helmed by a halfling man. And he's kind of just like... Um, what can I get you? I trust there won't be any trouble. No trouble at all, I promise. Okay, good. The strongest we have, you say? Yes. He pours from, you know, clearly the same spout he pours everything from. Here you go. He just kind of, like, eyes it for a second. Eyes the halfling and looks down to the cup. Shrugs, takes it, just chugs it all at once, slams it's, it down. It's okay. It's not bad. It's not great. It's just ale. It tastes better than piss. That's what matters. This is true. She asks for another. 
He pours it, gives it to you. Would you be letting to start a tab? Yes. Excellent. In and wish head, I put the name like, under. She looks around. Horst. There's that moment where he just looks and the people kind of closest to you look and that's like it just kind of like cascades through the rest of the bar. And he just goes, uh, this crowd isn't one for jokes. I look like I'm joking. Listen, I'm a simple man. I just happen to become the the the, the power that all the guards go to. But horse is not a man you mess around with. I'm just trying to make a living. And if I don't get paid for these drinks, then I can't make a living. You see how that works? So he kind of just does this like don't put me in this position of like having to go to ask Horsk for to pick up a tab that he clearly won't pick up. She just rolls her eyes. Torhana is fine. Most excellent. And he goes over to like a chalkboard where there's several people's names and he just writes your name down and he just puts two dashes. Would I recognize any of the names on the board? Give me a uh, perception check. Perception. 18, right? Yes, 18. Uh, yeah. You take a look at the names. I see Todd's name on there. Um, but that's it. No, none of the other names look familiar. I asked the guard, well, guard, bartender, excuse me, uh, if he's heard uh, anyone bragging about their latest trophies. Oh, Madam Terhana, this is a guard bar. That's all they do. Just, uh, and he kind of picks up what you're trying to, you know, do though, and he's just like, uh, I recommend have a seat. Um, the acoustics are quite fine in that corner over there. And uh, stay, drink, and he emphasizes drink, and uh, listen a while. I'm sure you'll hear very interesting stories. Although it'll be up to you to determine which ones are real and which ones are lies. She bows her head and thanks. And uh, heads over in the direction that she was directed to. Okay. Uh, since you're going to take some time and listen to people here, uh, we'll say you can give me another perception check with advantage. Um, just for the time spent here and you know you have a specific thing you're looking for. 19. 19. Aha. Okay. Uh, you sit and listen a while. You hear a lot of, uh, you know, I turned in this thief, made him tell me where he hid, hid the money. You know, now I'm 20 gold pieces richer. Uh, you know, shook down, uh, uh, shook down, you know, the obvious enforcer for one of the local thug groups. And, uh, you know, now I've got a new guy on the inside and he gives me all the scoop on when their shipments come in and just, Oh, you th all things like that. You do get a couple of uh, uh, you hear do hear a couple stories of uh, oh man, I've, I was out, I went out in the blood steps about a week ago hunting, and I took down a titan spawn. And he's just like telling this obviously like fake story. And his friends are like, mm, yeah, okay, buddy. You know, it's there. You start to hear as the night goes on more and more wild tales, and these are definitely fish tales. Um. You, it's very rare, but you do hear a couple people kind of brag about their conquests. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple. There's you know, there's a guy just like, yeah, dude, st still seeing Sarah. Oh yeah, you know, and they're just like, dude, you're married to her. No one cares. Um, you get like a couple, you get like a couple other people like that, and after a while, you hear nothing about the quadruplet and. From where they're at now and the stories they're telling now, someone would have definitely bragged about that by now. Hmm. Now, remember, this doesn't account for every guard in the city, but there's a large population of them here. 
Um, and, and, you know, people are, guards are cycling in, cycling out as their shift changes and things like that. And there's still, like, no mention of her. There's not even, like, the, hey, dude, I heard so-and-so was, like, she, he, he got with one of the dancers. Can you believe that? There's not even, like, a, hey, I know the guy who's with them. It's nothing. It's silent about it. Okay. I... I'm actually gonna go over and talk to them and start talking about my own hunts, starting specifically with the big fight that I had with Pieter the other day. Okay. You go over to one of the groups of guards and they kind of just all look at you as you like make yourself comfortable and sit down with them. They're like, yeah, no, that seat was open. You just kind of launch into your fight with Pieter. And as you're telling, you don't name any names at first, but as you're telling it, they're like, like realization dawns over their face and they're like, wait, you, you're the one that, they're like, holy shit. They're like, another round over here for us in the uh, formidable opponent. It just smiles like a little bit of her fangs kind of show up a little bit, but not in a malicious way. Kind of like, okay, cool. These humans, they smell funny, but they're not that bad. And they go into telling some of their own stories from being a guard of, you know, they make it, you, you can't, like, you're not sure what, but they do, they make, they make it seem like every guard exchange they have with someone, they're like three feet bigger than them and they beat them down and blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, they're, now they're just going into trying to top your story. And then you tell a story that tops theirs that actually happened. And they try to, they think, you know, you're boasting as well. So then they try to top that story. And they, you just guys keep going back and forth uh, for a while. Uh, Susa and Yane, you decide to try to find a library in Vegas. Uh, get, <laughs> give me an event, give me, give me an investigation check. Uh, eight. Okay. <laughs> Yane, you may try as well. Oh, hopefully it doesn't go like my last roll. <laughs> We're lost. Two natural ones. I am so overwhelmed by the boy that I, I know I'm supposed to be investigating, but I sit there and just stare at them. <laughs> We're literally walking into every building like, is this library? He, like, you walk into somebody's house and you're like, oh, we were told this is the library. And they're like, they're in the middle of supper. Like, get out, get out. Uh -huh. um, it takes, once again, takes, it's not like, you know, because you rolled low, you just can't find a building. But it does take a while to kind of orient yourselves where you are. You ask several people, you get conflicting directions. Uh, because you keep asking for a library and they're like, oh yeah, yeah go over here. And it actually turns out you've walked past the place like three or four times because it's not a library. There are not libraries in the city. Uh, what there are, are temples to Idra, who, while also being the goddess of sex and sexuality, is also the goddess of culture and secrets. So you walk into the temple and, you know, you kind of like, uh, you know, expecting orgies or something, but actually you see shelves of books in a nice kind of reading area. And uh, one of the acolytes comes up to you. Welcome to the Temple of Idra. How may I assist you today? Books. Yes. We do have books. We're looking for any type of information on the Four Winds. Ah, it is history you're looking for. That I can assist you with. Follow me. And she takes you down. It's not like it's not a very large area, and there's not a lot of there's not tons of shelves of books. They do not have you know books on every subject here. Um, and it seems that the books have more of a focus on history, um, cultures, um, you know, uh, ways of life, how different uh, kingdoms and empires, you know, the. Uh, laws of those lands, uh, how to interact with them, treaties, things like that. 
uh, but she does take you down uh, a section that is like combination like mythology and uh, you know uh, ancient history. Ancient history, you know, the world was remade 250 years ago, or 100. I'm sorry, 150 years ago. Um, so you, uh, and she just kind of points you to a book, and she's like, uh, "This would be." Uh, you must show interest after the speaker told the story. Uh, yes? wait, say, wait, say that again. What? I know that we just had a speaker perform the story. Yes, 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 we did. I assume yes. that's what's piqued your interest about this. Uh, sure, that's exactly what what's happened. I'm sure you've heard of the incident that occurred yesterday. Uh, no. The I've been in, I, I've been in the temple working the last couple of days. The speaker was murdered right oh. after giving. His, oh my! His rendition of the four winds. That's horrible. I, I wasn't going to tell her. I didn't want to make her sad. Is. Have they caught the person responsible, at least? That is what we are looking into. Oh. Well, she just seems kind of confused while you're looking up the story, but she's like, if there's anything else I can help you find that might assist you in your investigation, please let me know. I know. Um, anything with rituals that need hearts. Kind of looks at you. That's quite dark. Uh, it's it's uh, the speaker's heart was taken from their body. Whoa, oh, how horrid! Yes. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, it's not really an, a matter of subject expertise for acolytes of Idra and our small collection here. Wouldn't really have anything on dark arts like that. You would need a, a major library at one of the larger cities, perhaps the capital. Mm. Any information on Titan magic? Mm. Once again, same, same line of thinking. Unfortunately. Uh. It was worth a try. I will remember the capital. Well, if, if that's the case, then just the the book on the, I guess, history of the Four Winds or the importance of the Four Winds. And she just points, points to the book. You'll find that story uh, in this collection. Do you have a history of speakers? The importance of speakers? Uh, no, actually, much like your people, they uh, the speakers tend to prefer oral tradition as opposed to writing things down. Ah. Uh. Oh, I, I tried. Susa, let's look at your book. Uh, what language is this book written in? It's written in uh, in common. Okay. Or uh, whatever. Um, not common. The uh, the language of the Calestian hegemony, which is I want to say Calestian, but it is yeah, it is written in Calestian, which you all speak. All right, I will peruse through it then, looking for specifically uh, anything uh, having to do with the East Wind. Sure. Uh, once you start looking through the book, you actually realize that. Uh, this is a child. This is a children's book. Oh, this the while the um, while these stories are meant for children, they are you gather this is actual history. The, these are true. It's just kind of written um, in a way for them. Um, it seems like these are stories that are told, you know, from you know, uh, crib to now. And uh, everyone who is human would know these stories. Um, 
There are things like uh, Corian restarting the stars, Madriel moving the sun, Bellsmith moving the moons, uh, and then on Keeley, putting the winds into their proper places. And you're in your reading, and it's not a metaphor or you know alliterative device. Uh, the way it's talked about and the way the history talks, it, it records it is on Keeley literally subdued the four winds in various ways and set them into motion. Um, and the story goes that he went after the north wind first uh, and he tricked it into going into some water and since the into some ice water, which slowed it down enough for him to capture it, and hence why Fenrilic in the north is so cold. Mm. The south wind he trapped in a volcano, causing it to be hot. The west saw what happened to its brothers and decided to negotiate and come willingly, hence why any sail or travel travel is usually most favorable when using the West Wind, as it is believed that Ankili blessed it. And then the East raged and fought, and it actually took the strength of Ankili and the three winds under his purview now to subdue it. It is said that what the this, what strength was left of Cadam, the Titan, actually imbued that wind. And it's actually it's also believed that that wind being unruly is what caused the blood monsoon to happen, which is a major natural disaster that happened that you all would be aware of. Mm -hmm. So perhaps maybe someone could use the heart to resurrect the wind or recreate the disaster that occurred. Why would anyone want to do that what purpose would it serve not everybody is nice like us no i mean even if you're you know evil or something what would be the point in that what does it do what are they trying to attain by resurrecting favor yeah maybe a small amount of omnipotence in themselves, I guess. Hmm. It was probably a human that did this. Do, yeah, do do we know who who Oh no. Um Do they happen to have any books on the Blood monsoon. Uh, yes, that would be that would be history as well. Yeah, historical. Um, yeah, so it just it very easily would be within the same kind of uh, aisle. Actually, um, you're able to find it and the blood monsoon uh, was caused when um, Cadam the Titan was chained to a rock and dropped into the Blood Sea which is the uh, Eastern Sea on the, on the Eastern coast of Gelsbad. Mm. Uh, and him being there is what caused the sea to become the Blood Sea as it, his ichor, and it's still to this day, his, his wounds bleed into the, into the sea, um, which has caused massive transformations. The wildlife is all but gone and it's mostly horrible Titan spawn. Those who live near the coast are affected by the waters. Um, Anyone who sails those seas can only do so for a short time without becoming warped themselves. Uh, but yeah, starting about a hundred years ago, um, the waters of the Blood Sea started churning and gnashing and uh, boiling over. And then finally a giant monsoon erupted and almost all of the Eastern shores through the Eastern lands, even past the Kelder mountains, giant huge windstorms and rains of blood lasted for months and then went on for years um it caused entire cities to be demolished or wiped out um and 
it caused it caused the Horn Swaith River, the largest river on Skarn, to reverse course, um, which caused uh, the Blood Basin to form. Huh. Um, and with the Blood Monsoon came attacks from Titan Spawn. Um, monsters were bold enough to rise up from the Blood Sea and attack coastal cities, um, causing large economic downturn and you know populations to become smaller as they had to keep fighting off these attacks. Um, the the actual length of the blood monsoon was fourteen years. Okay, and it is said that a mysterious floating fortress, which people now refer to as Skykeep, emerged from a faraway land. People are not sure where from flew into the heart of the storm and then it crumbled, crashed into the mountains and caused the, the blood bond soon to end. This is about 25 years ago. Okay. Susa will jot down as many notes as she can in a little notebook. Okay. And watch fascinated. Yeah. Uh, so at first you're very confused, like why do they have some in the books? Like what's going on here? And then you realize that foolishly these humans store their knowledge inside of very easy and vulnerable and delicate books, as opposed to reciting them orally and being able to remember them in something more concrete, like the brain. Um, so it it crosses your mind almost immediately, like man. If, one crazy person just torched this place, all this knowledge would be lost. That's so devastating. For you and your clans, if one of you dies, while well, sad, it's not the loss of knowledge. You know, you can't, one of your buildings being burned down doesn't cause everything to be forgotten. Everyone else can help remember with your oral traditions but everything is stored in books here. This is the worst invention I have ever seen. These, these people in their books, no one tells anything with their voice anymore. Can you imagine, can you imagine, Susa, if they grab one of these books and they're walking around and they're, they're, they're speaking them and, and they just, they just run into a, a turnip cart and they turn over the turnips and just <sighs> I'm not out sure of character what... I just got reminded of the library of Alexandria so thank you I'm, I'm not sure what turnips have to do with it but just irresponsible this invention is so irresponsible people are going to become addicted to this and they're not going to be able to keep anything in their heads anymore they're just going to be able to go i don't have to remember anything i could just open a book you have to remember that we live longer than they do and so it's easier for them to write stuff down but but if if just one tiny disaster happens all of this knowledge just yeah like a blood monsoon and that actually was that was one of the repercussions of the blood monsoon is any of the history of the humans and on any eastern empire or city or nation a lot of it was lost they had to rewrite it see see if they just keep it in their heads they wouldn't have yeah, but to they, they all died <laughs> yes but not all of them there were some that managed to carry on, I'm sure. They have small brains. They seem to, yes. But still, this is the most irresponsible invention I have ever seen. Next, you think they're gonna come up with one of the books that just speaks itself? Just ask it to turn to the page, and it'll turn to the page. Then you'll lose use the lose the use of your hands, and and just because the laziness. 
I think I can make one of those. Don't do it. Don't enable the humans. <laughs> the, uh, is there the, any other knowledge you're looking for in the library? Um. No, I think we're going to have to go to some darker source to get the rest of the information that we would need. Okay. Maybe darker like a necromancer. Gar! Yeah. You are able... You were able to uh, track down uh, um, uh, Darnell, uh, who is, uh, he kind of like, you know, was friendly-ish to you guys, so he lets you know that the tavern he's staying at. You kind of uh, swing by, drop in, you see that he's at one of the tables just nursing an ale. He's got one of uh, one of the crawling crawl one of the crawling hands like on the table. It's just kind of like dancing and like doing tricks. I call over the bar. I call to the barkeep. Another round for me and my friend. And they I look up, see where you're walking to, and they just go, <clears throat> "Oh, uh, <clears throat> Gar, I believe, right?" Yeah. No. Darnell. Yes, that's me. Right. Yep. Thought of more questions to ask me. Surely you don't still think I am a uh, suspect. No, no. But uh, I, we have determined that there's a morose element to this tale investigation and uh, I thought even though you aren't exactly uh, a great necromancer you still might know some people who are into uh, less than scrupulous means no offense nope I mean that's fine you're just profiling an entire uh, sect of magic but that's fine uh well, I don't know. There's not much to tell you. I'm uh, from Hollow Fost. So we're kind of the good guy necromancers. Uh, can you be any more specific? Is there a, a specific uh, so, magic uh, or ritual you're looking at? I'm looking into rituals that might pertain to uh, a human heart. Now that's... Uh, there's a lot of necromantic like magic said, that uses parts of people, but uh, most of it's either you know ones that are already dead or you know, things like a fingertip or hair or a bit of skin or some blood. Uh, a whole heart... That's uh, quite the sacrifice. What kind of uh, ritual might come about from a sacrifice of a whole heart? Well, Perhaps even taken from a living creature. Still beating heart. Well, things you could do with that are... With the heart, much like the soul or the mind, you have one of the major essences of a person. So you could summon them, you could uh, hold sway over their body. I've heard of sometimes uh, even creating another, I wouldn't say person, another being in their likeness. But that's all extremely dark, extremely powerful magic. That would be something only like the elders of Hollow Faust would be able to do. An archmage, perhaps. Are there any, uh, I'd say dabblers, but uh, the way you're wording it makes them uh, a little bit more 
proficient than that. But have you heard tell of anyone in this area that might have that kind of capability? Well, uh... Even just whispers. Well, uh, I mean, Hollow Faust isn't that far, and then, of course, there is Blavido Tell, the dark city in the forest. Uh, history for you, your character would know this. Uh, the city of Hollow Faust uh, is a city of necromancers, uh, but good necromancers. You know, they raise the dead and they do stuff, but like, they're not out to purposely abuse that power or take over the world with it or like raise people, you know, like against their will or like, you know, go out and kill a bunch of people so they can just be raised up as zombies. Um, turns out there's a lot of necromancers. They're like, no, I want to be evil. That's why I'm a necromancer. Uh, so there's a big split and they're like, all right, fuck you. We're going out into the horn song. We're gonna make our own city with blackjack and hookers and zombies. Um, so the city of Glivid Hotel was formed. Uh, you, you, you'll, you'll have to inform the group of this, but Yane's character uh, would totally be familiar with these people as they are constantly polluting the horn saw with undead creatures that you know her cl their clans would constantly be coming in contact with. Um, a big part of uh, anybody that lives in the horn saw is to either ally themselves with that necromantic city or combat that necromantic city as there's really no middle ground with them. Uh, there is a constant cold war between the two cities, uh, Hollow Faust and Glivid, um, as they both have standing armies of zombies that are literally just, they just stand on the border and face each other, waiting for one of them to attack. It's kind of spooky. Um, you also know that a lot of uh, some of the more evil or newer uh, spells or rituals that would come from necromancy or uh, things like that would come from that city. And the, fa the fact that they're in the Hornsaw is the only reason why they haven't been wiped off the map by you know a combination of peoples coming together to be like, fuck these guys in particular because they're evil necromancers. Uh, no one's going to try to march an army through the Hornsaw Forest. Alright. If someone were to be casting one of these rituals, would you be able to go back to Hollow Faust for us and perhaps talk to one of your archmages about a method to either uh, stop or reverse the ritual. Potentially. Um, I w we would need evidence of this and uh, at least, you know, a part of the, the incantation or the ritual that they're doing uh, as well as any other specifics you could provide. Uh, not just so that they could undo it, but that they would even get involved as tensions between the two are high and for Hollow Faust to directly strike against the city, that would be uh, maybe construed as an act of war and their cold war might escalate and heat up. So we would need a lot of evidence. If they could justify it as the as Glavid sending out, you know, agents of doom, then it would be they would be able to deal with it probably. But we would they would need a lot of evidence to act. Well, I glance around, make sure nobody's listening, and I say. If you were to at least know that the speaker's heart was being used for something nefarious, would they be inclined to uh, 
participate a little more readily. They would need proof that it's actually a necromancer of Glavido Hotel that's using that heart. As opposed to just some random Titan worshiper or other monstrosity. If it were just a Titan worshiper, how bad do you think they might be able to make it with a heart? Who's to say? One human heart? Not much they could do about bringing back their Titans, but enough? Maybe a piece? Maybe enough to bestow a power? Enough to guide the way to one of their parts? Enough to do something but with just one heart? That would be enough to power maybe one spell or one ritual. Have you found evidence of them collecting any others? Nothing yet, but uh, if there's going to be a rash of hearts being removed, then perhaps I might need to look into more than just that. Prove that it's not just Glavide trying to do some nefarious means. If I do prove that, though, that it is Glavide, I will inform you so that you might be able to tell Hollow Faust. I will, uh, I will work with you if you can prove this. It would be in the interest of all to figure out what is happening. In the interest of life. Strange Indeed. for me to tell someone who raises the undead. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I understand now. I should not have gotten carried away with uh, the term. All is forgiven. But yes, more evidence would be needed for Holofast to intervene directly. I drink the rest of my drink get another round and then spend some time just BSing with him. Okay. All right. And that brings us to Lanathun. So, sorry, just one more, just because I'm still learning some of the lore for this. So, sure. Hallow Faust is the city of good necromancers. Yes. Glavel? Glavide Hotel. Glavide is that group of the I'm totally evil ones. Yes. Okay. And they and went they to the Horns and made war. their own city. They went to the Horns and made their own city. There's a little bit of a cold war. Okay. So if we can prove that it's them, the other ones will help us. Got it. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Great. Just all to right. Make sure I so, was uh, of all that. Nope. Absolutely. Uh, so you go into. Uh, <laughs> You go into one of the uh, market areas mm -hmm. uh, because this being Vegas, not so much a market exchange of goods, but a large area where the gray acts. So your gambling, your prostitution, your things like that, that aren't murder or stealing can be discussed and talked about. Okay. And uh, give me an investigation check to Perfect. kind of figure yeah. out which of these ne'er to good do gooders might be uh, the one to talk to. Perfect. Let's see less of these ones I'm seeing. Oh. Ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking. So you're looking around. Do... You look around, and uh, you talk to a couple people, and it's actually someone who approaches you. Hmm. It's an elf, and uh, the, uh, he's dressed in uh, relatively simple attire, uh, but you notice that it all is a, a shade of green of some sort. Okay. <clears throat> and just kind of walks up to you, and he's like, Hey, man, how you doing? What type of uh, elf? Uh, he, it would be a... The... The non Drendali, non Broadreach, which is a. Which uh, is a. Is a. Who remembers their elf? Gan, G Ganju self. Yes. I, for some reason, was thinking it started with an A. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. So I, I, a, it would be a Ganju self. Okay. 
So I, I look to him and you know address him back in very proper, like uptight, uh, elvish, just like. He dismisses it and uh, continues talking in uh, uh, Calastian. Hmm. Oh, I see. What's up, man? What's, what's, no need to be formal with it, dude. Mm, I apologize. We do not know each other intimately, so I assumed I would treat you with the correct well, respect. You don't really know me, man, but like I know you and your group. Dude. Hang out with that. Hang out with Gar. He's a pretty cool dude. Pretty righteous. Pretty righteous. He is quite Hang righteous. Out. He definitely lives up to the standard of his divine sta- of his divineness. Yeah, yeah, quite righteous. Yeah. Yes, yes. Worships Madriel. Yeah, he's pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Yes. Ma- and then uh, Madriel. You got the. Uh, you got a couple new people in town with you, huh? That's uh, interesting, man. Is it? Seems like, seems like you're taking all the newcomers. Like, is that your thing, man? Is that, is that how you roll? Just making friends. Don't worry. But here's here's the thing. I I represent a certain group of people. Oh. And you're uh, representative. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man. Perfect. I, 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 Any yeah. group you're representing, obviously, gotta, is the, gotta pay the, the bills. standards. Yes, of course. Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, uh, seems like you're uh, taking a keen interest into, into Xander, which is cool, man. It's totally cool. Like, Xander. definitely should figure out what happened to him. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh, so, a, a yeah, yeah. Awful. Well. Awful. Yeah, man. Yeah, truly. The bad thing about death is, like, it's final. Right. Like, it's the end. Like, mm. you don't come back from that, man. Like, unless, you're there's dead. A, unless there's a cleric around. <laughs> yeah, man, I suppose that's true. Yes. So, uh, here's the thing, dude. Mm. Xander, yep. he had some debts. Did he know? Yeah. And so, like, since you guys seem to be really tight with Xander, mm. it seems like those debts pass to you guys. Or at least that's the way my organization sees it, man. Is that right? So, like, yeah. So, like, if you... Just pay that back. Sure. That'd be totally righteous. Of course. Yeah. Yes. So, like, we're gonna give you a week. Okay. And like, we expect payment in full. Ah, yes, I understand. And does there are an invoice or perhaps a receipt of some sort? Well, that's really up to like the individual to like keep, man. Is that right? Um. Yeah. But uh, I can tell so, you that uh, that uh, Xander, yeah, man, he he really bad, bad luck. Like bad uh, he luck. just he could never bet on the right horse or ah. familiar or ah. claw or sure couldn't pick. Uh, like say between know. a manticore, a human, a dwarf, and a gnome, he would pick the wrong one. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He would like pick the Manacora, like totally racist, man. I, totally racist, thinking like they're naturally fast, but like he'd be wrong. Sure. So like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So his total debt is like ten thousand gold pieces. Ten thousand. That's all. <laughs> no, yeah, man. No, no, that's no, all. No interest with that. No, no juice. As well, no. Say. Since like this like passed to you and this is like a totally unexpected fee God, that you're yes. countering of course we're not gonna put any interest on that you are kind and with a lot of foresight because obviously, yeah, so like obviously with such an unexpected you know thing yes i mean you wouldn't want to be unreasonable with your requests like with the interest so no i, I get that you are you're right. a keen businessman and i can respect exactly that. yes absolutely Savvy. Yeah. yeah, savvy, correct. Yeah, so like you, me gonna, and my people, we're yeah. gonna need that ten G, like in a week. In man. a week, yes, that's seven days, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, seven days from, like, starting right, now, right man. This, like right to the like yeah. the sun being at approximately yeah, clock, and he put, like holds up his wrist. <laughs> there's nothing there. <laughs> of like starting now, man. Yes, yes absolutely. No, great, excellent. Okay, yeah. great. And so, and where should it? Where is it that we should meet you, in order to uh, draw this large sum of money? We wouldn't want to 
We wouldn't want to meet amongst the rabble, obviously, with that kind of coin. So, like, it's funny you ask that, man. Because, yes. like, you don't need to find us. Oh. We'll, like, find you. Oh, very, very spooky. Yeah, man. Yeah, you seem to have infiltrated the city thoroughly. Well, like, not to brag, but, like... No, no, no of course this not. This is, like, kind of our city. Oh, is it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And is there a group name that you represent? One that one might hear on the whispers of those who owe money? One that drives fear into the hearts of those who don't pay? Whoa, man, like, slow your roll. We're oh, not, like, I... trying to scare anyone here. This is, like, a totally friendly mm. meeting. Okay, no. We're not, like, we're not saying if you don't pay us, you're gonna die. That's that's ridiculous, mm. man. Oh, dead dead that's people like, can't pay debts. I would never believe Well, like, that. more than that, death mm -hmm. is, like, the end. It's like, final, as you it's mentioned. It's final. Correct, right. Yes. So, like... We'll find you. Okay. And no group name. Well, like, all right. Like and he leans in and he's like, mm, yes. And he holds out. Wait, no, you, shit. You didn't have the knife. Gar had the knife, right? Gar has the knife, right? Shit. Okay. He's just like, mm. he uh, pulls another knife out. He pulls a knife out that matches the one you found. Oh, okay. Ooh, oh, that's quite nice. We're the scaled, man. The scaled. Yeah, man. Oh my. Is that right? And what does this knife represent? Oh, that knife means that, like, you owe us. Oh, so if you were to give me the knife, then that's like a marker that I were to owe you money. He's like, give, man. And he shows that both his hands are empty. And he's like, put it in your pocket. Oh. I don't have to give nothing, man. You just... I see. Do you mind if I... Do you mind if I... Only because, of course, you have done so well for yourself, and obviously you want to take this, because this is your city. But is that enough? Couldn't this be your... new veneer? Like, the skilled are everywhere, man. Ah, okay, perfect. Let me. We're in the Calastian hegemony. Okay. We're in the Dwarven Empire. Excellent. Dude, we're with the Drendali. Okay. We're everywhere. Per oh wow with the Trindali. Mm, I hear they're very scary. So might I give you a small piece of advice? Sure, man, advice is free. Right. Advice is free. Okay, great, excellent. Perhaps in the future, do not give a weapon to someone you're trying to take money from. You never know what that point might come back to make. Nah, day. man, we'll like... see you in a week. All right, dude. You do you, man. Yes. He kind of just, like, leans up against, like, uh, like the closest, like, fruit cart and just reaches into an orange and starts peeling it. I I'll turn it back around. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is... This he's, like, got one of the... He's got one of the, uh... He's got like a piece of orange's mouth. He's just like, <laughs> "Yeah, man, what's up?" That's not a turnip, is it? Nah, man. This is this is an orange. An orange, like the color. There's a there's a food. Whoa, the orange is orange. Uh... This is interesting. I'm experiencing a lot of new Dude. Food. So. Do you mind if dude. I. Dude! You. Dude! He just turns and he starts walking away every like five seconds or so. <laughs> dude! So he fell into debt to the absolute dumbest people in town. Perfect. This will go quite well for us. I'll go up to a random fruit cart and try whatever new food is available. Since this one is apples. Apples, yes, interesting. Now, I have had an apple before, but this is a different colored apple than I saw than I had last time. What is what is this one? This is a uh, this is one of those golden delicious. Golden. 
I've noticed that the fruits often have a color associated with them. Is this common? Is this a thing? Holy shit, yes. That is a thing. Oh, wow. Excellent. And I'll do a transaction for a couple of apples. Since they're like not even paying fruit, attention because you blew their you blew their <laughs> mind to like grapes color associated apples color associated orange color associated yes. oh my god and you just like blow their mind they're just like okay whatever perfect I because I doubt I get a lot of fruit in the underneath the Kender Mountains no so, no so fruit is you like get I must you think, get mushrooms right yeah mushrooms and root vegetables probably that can grow in, yeah potatoes Pota they we have to pull from above <laughs> yes <laughs> they're like uh we, we like we, apples we to you. yeah we pick potatoes it's great because fun language fact real quick oh uh in french uh potatoes are a palm de terre which means apple of the earth wow wow <laughs> You're welcome. Dude. 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 <laughs> All right. So at this point, uh, we'll say that everyone's combined timings and, you know, lower checks and blah, blah, blah. All the timing. You guys all meet back at the Knob Goblin right about, uh, you know, eight or nine at night. Okay. So this, this day of investigation was a true full day of investigation. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, so you guys staying in the tavern for the night? You're going to go anywhere else? Sneaky, sneaky, stalky, stalky. Okay. Oh, Is no, the rest of the party, like, going to, like, go with them and, like, be in the city and, like, listen for, like, oh, shit, something went wrong? Or you're just like, eh, you has got this. If we're all meeting sneaky, back sneaky, up... Sneaky, sneaky, stalky, stalky? Yeah, if we're all meeting up for just a little bit, I would say, like, I do believe the child should have some sort of backup. Just in case. Sneaky, sneaky, stocky, stocky. Yeah. Susa would be afraid to go because she would stick out. Gar kind of stands up and goes clunk, clunk. I'm great for helping out the sneaky, sneaky, stocky, stocky. Then, well, while Gar. And then he turns towards Terhana. Maybe uh, the lioness should hunt, too. Capital idea. Yes. Just don't beat anyone this time. I didn't Unless beat anyone last we need time. To. For one turn of that, a guy, I swear. And then Pieter with his broken ribs. Look, he literally asked for it. Okay, you got me on that one. Um, so again, I assume we're filling everyone in with what we learned in our different yes, investigations. Yeah. So I will just say, like, the one thing. So just a heads up, everybody. We're going to owe some very dumb people a lot of money in about seven days. So just be aware. You dropped the group name? Yes. Uh, Terhana, you know this group, the Scaled, and you listen to Lamalthoon's talking at them. You're like, no, no, that's the Scaled are like a respected and well-run organization that really are everywhere. Um, hmm. There's two main criminal groups uh, in Scar. Uh, one being the Scaled. The other being one minute, one minute. Hold on, I'll get there. The uh, the Kaiharman League, which is hmm. they operate here in the Celestian hegemony, um, and then the Scaled kind of operate everywhere else that isn't uh, on a boat. There's a different criminal organization for boats, but um, it's interesting that to you at least, Terhana, with your criminal background. Uh, for scale to be in New Veneer, uh, as this is pretty solidly not their territory. Um, so for them to kind of be claiming a slice and not just a slice, but like a slice of like the Vegas of the Celestian hegemony, very interesting. Um, 
but the the way the Skelter looked at is they're very romanticized. They're very much the you know, like when people say like the guild or the thieves guild or the criminal guild, or whatever. Like they're talking about the Skelter. Um, it was formed by you know three siblings who were like, why be wizards apprentices when like we could use the skills we've learned so far and like go like Robin Hood people and like pull tricks on people and things like that. And eventually it evolved into criminal stuff. Um, but they're more cunning and underhanded and use magic a lot. Um, but it's always for bettering their the members' lives or other member or other people's lives. They don't try they don't really try to hurt people or, you know, killing. That's not really that's not their thing. Their thing is mainly like kind of lighthearted. They mostly they do, you know, gambling, prostitution, smuggling, thieving, those kinds of things. They're, they're not the, scamps. Yeah, they're the lovable scamps. They're not the, you know, pirates, they're not slavers, they're not um you know, they're not they're not the hardcore criminal activities. They're the lighthearted, like, oh, you're gonna throw me in jail just for, you know, rigging a gambling. Oh, come on now. Um, but they are very professionally run, and they are all over Scarn. We're not Scarn. They're all over Gelspad, which is you know what you guys know of Scarn. <clears throat> But yeah, so for Lamal Thun to kind of describe this guy as like dumb and like, oh, we could easily like take this guy. You're, two 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 ideas pop in your head. Either a he's not actually with the scaled and like you could just take this guy and he's trying to like maybe use the organization's name to give himself some credit, or Lamal Thun was just rused. I'm actually personally thinking more towards the rused part, but. I would like to backtrack and find that guy and talk to him later. Okay. But not uh, us right now. Right now, sure. we're kind of got to focus on mm -hmm. going to help yeah. the we got, a, we got a week to deal with him, so, yeah. Yeah, Lamal Thun gives you enough of a description that if you purposely went looking for this guy, if he was out and about, you could probably find him. Especially okay. if you had a track, especially if you had a track yourself. Um, and for you people saying, yes, they're called pirates, Actually, in Scarred Lands, they have a organization name. They're called. Hold on. Rats. They are called the Jaffnian Dynasty. So there, put that in your pipe and smoke it. I think he already smoked it for us. Uh, but yeah, so. I, can I assume that you guys are like gonna at least like walk Yune to the city outskirts or something like as a group or? I, I'm I'm 100% accompanying Yune on the trip, like full full stop. Okay. Everyone else. We'll all you know walk to the limits. Right. Yeah. yeah I'm not saying least... like you're going with them to like yeah. the camp itself. I'm just saying like you know walking as a group and then being like within like torch seeing distance of yeah yeah definitely okay. to the to the gate at least right okay perfect to the, to um, the gate and then showing off the guards our badges so that they know yane is part yes our, our badges 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 i don't need the stinking badges and telling the guards basically that uh you know if they happen to notice Yene and Terhana to just ignore them. Official city business. Move along. Move along. Uh, okay. So you guys uh, all start making your way through the streets of Erlysium. The Vegas of New Veneer. And uh, you uh, start going towards the same gate you went out earlier where the uh, um, the dancers would be making camp out of just outside of and uh, as you're getting close kind of uh, coming out of uh, one of the houses is this amazingly voluptuous gorgeous woman who is holding a very large uh, pitcher and uh, a tray of uh, freshly cooked meats 
and she's just like, can I interest you weary travelers in a bite or a drink? Please come, wow. refresh yourselves. It is, it is, the hour is late and you all, if you'll excuse me, look as if you hadn't had a good meal in a couple days. Terhana is suspicious, so she declines. I just want to do it. Gar just wants to do an insight roll just to see if she's just trying to get money out of us or okay. if it's an underhanded dealing that is going to try and take place because, you know, this city is this city. This city. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. A nine. <laughs> she seems honest. I mean, she might like she might ask for payment like you know not an exorbitant rate but she might ask for payment but she seems honest and you the the wind has finally brought the smell to your nose and first is the meat so you're like wow that is those have been smoked and they're perfect and then the ale you're like that might be better than mine i'll have to taste it to find out but it smells awfully good samples well I'd be offer I'd be willing to give you a full plate and a full tanker for our gold piece I give her a gold piece and grab the or take it to go not really a to go thing I do need the tankard and the plates back if you understand. Your food or drink beyond this point. I, 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 I just immediately down the thing of ale and just stick the. Well, she's holding a whole pitcher, so like you would need to come inside and she'd need to pour you a tankard. <laughs> Are you sure that I would need? To... <laughs> oh, oh, I was I misunderstood. She came up to all of us. Did yeah, so she, 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 yeah, she walked right out of a door as you guys were passing by. So you guys oh. are very fairly close, and she's just like. Food, drink, you guys look like you could use it. Oh. Oh, so we yeah. haven't gotten out of the city yet? No, not yet. Oh. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're still in the city. This I is before you got to the gate. very different, where we got to the point where we were about to start sneaking, and someone just walks out and was like... No, no, hey, no, 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 no. No, no. no. Hey, what, are you, what are you doing there? Have some food. I missed a line in there. I apologize. That, okay. The, the, one of those RPG games where the NPC's behavior acts weird, and they just fall you into a dungeon. <laughs> Can I interest you in food and drink? Uh... You had to walk through like three dart traps and like a smashing wall trap. Are you okay? <laughs> no, no, no. This is before you've reached the gate. You know, you're still, you know, s several hundred yards from the gate and okay. you're passing by one of the houses. Just one of the houses. It's not very, it's not descript. There's not like any like a sign or anything, but she walked out and she's just, like very, very, very beautiful woman. Um, it's just like, you know, you look like you could use food and drink. On, on a scale of 1 to 20, how delicious does this smell? Uh, it smells like a 20. Like, this is perfectly smoked meat that has been seasoned and cooked correctly. It is I run inside. Okay. Tusa, <laughs> no! How, how, far, how far are we from the gate? A couple hundred yards. I... I think I aliens are contacting her. Dwayne. I look at the gate. I look at her. I'm like, I, I hear it too. I'll, I'll okay. be back. We just have to walk our friend out. You know, very, very safe here and all. Oh. So you're gonna leave. So you're gonna leave Susa behind. I, I failed my. I failed my wisdom save against the food. I so. tell. <laughs> I, I, I tell you guys like escort them out. I'll. I'll. I'll check on Susa. All right, we'll catch up. You better have you better have a you better have a pitcher waiting for me. Ah. So, so Lamalthun and Seuss are staying, and the other three of you are leaving. Yeah, but I, my goal would be to go in and get Seuss and be like, we should be with the uh, like. I'm trying to be like, hey, maybe we do this later, that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, as the three of you start, like as as the like you guys gotta start to split. She's like, no. I insist, please come inside. Mm -hmm. The three of you who were 
leaving. Give me a wisdom saving throw. There it is. Oh. I guess actually the Malphoon, give me one too, because she wants to make sure she gets everyone. Okay. What? Wisdom? Wisdom saving throw. 19. I would like to 22. use my vote from last week on this one, just in case. Uh, okay. <laughs> Definitely need it. Yes. Yeah. I got a 13. You all fail. Wow. Yes. You heard that right. With your 22 as the highest roll, you all fail. Wow. You all, what? She issues the command, come inside. And you are all driven to come inside. The heck? Oh Witchcraft. Sorcery. Seuss is already in there eating sausage. Seuss is already in there. <laughs> and you are eating, and you, you, there, without her coming in or pouring you a drink or laying down a plate in front of you, there is a plate and drink that has magically appeared in front of you, and you just start eating and drinking, and it is the most delicious in the ale and food you have ever had. In fact, it, even though it looks clearly like, you know, a smoked meat of some sort, it tastes like a delicacy from back from the, uh, the jeweled city. Like it, it mm. tastes like a sothi food, and you're like, I don't know how, but this tastes like a sothi food, and that's amazing. Hmm. This is amazing. I cast disbelief. The rest of you take a seat as well and start <laughs> eating. Once again, it tastes like you're, it clearly looks like a smoked meat and an ale, but it tastes like whatever food or drink that would be most delicious to you personally. And as you are partaking, you all start to fall into a stupor and the beautiful woman that was standing in front of you starts to transform into a hideous crone. Her shoulders slink in, she has a hunched back. Her eyes get all the, the claws, uh, the uh, crow's feet. Her, the, the color and the sparkle that was in her eyes diminishes and they turn pure black orbs. Her hair starts falling out, and what's left is just stringy, disgusting little bits. Her nails elongate, turn almost into claws, and her beautiful voice turns into a hideous cackle. <laughs> <laughs> and you all are in this stupor where, I guess technically the 5e condition would be you are, par you are all paralyzed. Hello, darlings. I am Belsameth. Alarm bells for everyone. Ah, Belsameth is one of the major goddesses of Skarn. Uh, she is the oh. exact opposite evil twin of your god, Gar, uh, Madriel. They are literally twins, and they are the exact opposites of what each uh, each of the other tries to imbue. So where Madriel is all about, like, redemption and happiness and, you know, uh, compassion, healing, motherhood. Belsmeth is like witchcraft, madness, murder. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, she's totally metal. Uh, she's like, you've all been very interesting to follow these last couple of days as you attempt to figure out what happened to that poor speaker. And she goes up to you, Gar, and she kind of caresses your face. Uh, one that follows the ill example of my sister. How darling. She continues just kind of pacing along uh, the circle that you guys are on. You're all sitting at a circular table and she just walks around the circle. <sighs> so, what to do with all of you? I like chaos. I like murder. But I don't like what's happening here. This is a perversion of what I want. I did not sanction this. <sighs> Susan just goes, perversion? You try to talk, but you can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. <laughs> <clears throat> like, you just the mus your muscles just don't, they won't move. They're, they're not working. <sighs> she looks, once again, does another circle. You all look like you could potentially fulfill my needs and serve my purpose, but how to tell, really? how to know if you can face the challenge in front of you. Well, perhaps I should imbue a little chaos then. 
I'll allow you to prove yourself to me, and perhaps if you prove yourself, I will help you solve this mystery that you are so woefully ignorant about. On the edge of the blood steps, not too far out of the city, there's a small cave filled with cultists to dear old mother. They are foolish, they are stupid, they are powerful, and they only grow more powerful as they have somehow, through their stupidity, stumbled upon a piece of dear old mother. They are attempting to, well, not purify, but correct the defiling of it. And then they will attempt to go into the horn saw with that as their tribute and join one of the various clans there and find other pieces of dear mother and help hopefully put her back together. Those fools will never be able to do that, but I must ensure that the piece falls into the correct hands. My hands. So, you will go to this cave. You will slay the cultist there. You will retrieve the piece of Mormo. You will come back to me, give me the piece, and in turn, I will not kill all of you. And I will also give you some answers which you so desperately need. She looks at Susa and Keely, the four winds. That clearly has nothing to do with this. She looks at you, Lamalfoon, the bookie, a red herring. And she looks at Gar. And you, the necromancer, the obvious choice? Of course, I expect no less from one of my sister's followers. But yes, do as I say, and I will help you. Don't, and I will kill you. These are your options. Now, sleep. And all of your eyes grow heavy. You fall asleep. You wake up. It's still nighttime outside. Only a couple hours have passed. You're on the street. People are passing by, but they just kind of look at you. It's not uncommon for there to be passed out people on the street. But you're not in the same location you were before. You are outside the temple of Belsameth that is in the city. And that is where we'll leave for the night. Oh. You'll have to tune in next time to see what our adventurers will do after being literally contacted in the presence of a god. I don't know whether to feel happy or sad. I it's up to disgusted. you. That is a fair response for Gar. <laughs> I mean, like, Dwayne doesn't know whether to feel happy or sad. Oh, fair. <laughs> or no. now, we must leave our adventurers as they contemplate their next steps and how they will continue to navigate the perilous world of Scar. We will have to wait until next week to see what happens. It has been a pleasure telling the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we performed performing it for you. Thank you for watching and listening, and a special thank you and shout out to our Patreon supporters, Weapon M, Don Arnetto, and David. Let's hear from our players now. Once again, your name, handle, character, and where people can find you outside of Vorpal Tales. I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi on the internet, and tonight I was playing Susa. The next time you will see me is tomorrow playing one of our bat kickers, Deviant Radiation Burns. Hey, everybody. Hey. Oh. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Hey, everybody. I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. You can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever, and tonight I have been Yanae. You can find me again on Sunday evening playing a very short game of Cult. How short is short? Like, me short? Or like, you short? Like, this session. Oh, okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Pinky. You can find me all over the internet at PinkyPie88. And I had a blast playing Terhana. Next time you can find me on this awesome Vorpoli channel, on this awesome Vorpoli time, will be on Wednesday with Infinity. Woot woot. Woot woot.
Um, hi, everybody. I am uh, Steve. You can find me all over the internet as we're at Voodoo Arcade. Uh, you can find me uh, next on Sunday, also playing in that very short session of cult before we eventually move on Sunday to our mage, the Ascension question mark game. Uh, also, uh, if I can convince Patty and we all yell at him enough, you might be able to find me and him trying to get some dubs and siege uh, over the next couple of days, maybe. So let's all yell at Patty what? to do that. Say what? Get the dubs. <laughs> and I am Devin. You can find me online at Sorta of Sullied. And next time you will see me is on Tuesday for our Kickstarter game for the Masses of the Mythos. Join it. It's awesome. Thank you. I have been Patty Shank underscore, and it'll be another week before you'll be able to find out what happens to our lovable rap scallions. But in the meantime, I encourage you watch Vorpal Tales' other shows, which include. This tomorrow, Saturday, technically today, uh, Deviant Radiation Burns at 10. That's different from our usual time. Sunday, Cult. Monday, Cyberpunk. Tuesday, Scion, Mass of the Mythos for the Kickstarter. Wednesday, Infinity. Thursday, Grim Hollow with Kimchi. And Friday, right here, same time, same place, more Scarred Lands, Draco Genesis, Titan's Lament. Now, for the true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Vorpal Tales, you, the audience, can vote for our fav for your favorite player as well. We shall tally, tally the votes, and after we sign off, and award our players appropriately. So, in the same order, nominate someone to receive your vote for the night. I, Susa, give my vote to Lamalthoon for his lovable interaction with said hippie man. Thank you. I am going to give my vote to Pinky for that fantabulous keycat makeup and also chasing after the bad guy when he was running. All force. And then also when she held him like a kitten. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, honestly am going to have to reciprocate the vote. I thought it was absolutely hilarious how uh, you're like, Wait, what? I'm the child. You know what? Go do it yourself. I ain't going to do no sneaky nothing. <laughs> you, your character was the sassy pants, and I loved it. Ah, uh, this is a really tough one because I'm already loving these characters a lot and our interactions. I, uh, though, am going to. I'm going to give mine to Tiffany, thank you, tonight for, yes, running down that guy when I said, having the cool moment, coming back. Uh, yeah, just had a lot of good moments tonight. Also going to give it to Tiffany because chucking a turnip at a hundred yes. yards to pelt mm. him in the back of the head. And then, this badge is worthless. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All of those moments and more were quite amazing. We hope you enjoyed our story tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next week at the same place and time to continue this tale. Until next time, may Corian light your way. Stay safe, stay awesome, stay adventurous, and make good choices.